Boom. What up, fam? Anthony Dream Johnson here today, CEO of the Redman Group, founder of 21 Convention, 21 Studios, 22 Convention, Michael McGrady again, 21 University, and 10,000 other things. I appreciate you tuning in to today's show. I'm very excited for it. Episode 136 of the Redman Group. How to bang a thousand women with the infamous, notorious coach, John Anthony. He's been called the Genghis Khan of the Manosphere. This guy is a real deal. And this guy's fucking savage. I think the Manosphere needs a huge shot of testosterone. And this man brings that to the table. So without further ado, please let me welcome for the first time ever to the Red Man Group, John Anthony. John, welcome to the stream. Hey, what's up, man? Thanks for having me on. Yeah, dude, I'm really excited, man. I, I've known about you for several years now. I think I found you back in 2016. Uh, a lot of my friends who actually get laid in Orlando, they were huge fans of your stuff back then, still are. And, yeah, uh, yeah I, gave, I gave a big layer talk to uh, the Orlando guys maybe in 2015 or 2016. Oh, cool. Fuck yeah. Yeah, I was actually in the original Orlando layer called Top Layer way back in the day, 2006, 2007. And uh, I think what you went to is probably an evolution of that. I think those like the RSD guys doing their thing yeah, back uh -huh. then. Yeah. So uh, not everyone on my channel is going to know you. Um, I haven't obviously interviewed you before or anything like that, but I've been aware of you. For the guys who don't know you, what's kind of your background and origin story? How did you find the Manosphere? How did you find the pickup community? How did you become a coach? So I was like uh, the, like the classic like super nerd like in uh, in middle school and high school I was like probably the, the nerdiest shyest guy out of like 700 people, um, <clears throat> and it was it was I never imagined being in this position. I was raised very Catholic, planning on waiting till marriage to have sex, planning on never touching a drink, and then both those things kind of went the total opposite direction. But I but I I was given like a kind of a, a lucky genetic luck of the draw in the terms of having hyper analytical abilities. So I always excelled in like math and. Um, computer programming and these kinds of things. I, I quickly mastered poker in high school, mastered stock trading, mastered chess. Whenever whenever I got into a skill game, I was able to hyperanalyze and optimize it. And <clears throat> I also came from like a very verbally abusive childhood. And that gave kind of the drive and ignition component <clears throat> to really give so much of a shit about mastering stuff with girls. And it, that's been instrumental in driving me along the way. But Long story short, one of my nerdy friends from high school who ended up doing a, a PhD in quantum physics, <clears throat> he's like living on a boat now. He was like, dude, you got to read the book, The Game. And then he was also recommending Mystery Method. And it, it sounded like a big scam to me because I was pretty clueless with chicks and it, it didn't seem like there could be a method to the madness. It seemed like there was too much stuff that you couldn't quantify and this and that. About it, uh, what year What year was that? What time or frame? It must have been like 2007. Okay. And then nice. I finally, yeah, I finally read the stuff. And then it kind of like blew me away. Like in my first field report, I, I said, I've, I feel like I've been given, uh, you know, like dynamite, like fish in the barrel kind of thing. And I, and I thought that everyone that was exposed to, to game and pickup theory would have a, a giant advantage and that there would be all these guys, you know, around the world that kind of underground had like this, this superpower, so to speak. And it, it came to be that it, it turned out to be quite the opposite that most of the guys, mostly due to, to bad information and bad coaching, most of the guys that are in, into this kind of stuff are actually fairly terrible, the, the vast majority. And that's not necessarily their fault. It's the fault of these coaches that are purposely misleading them, purposely scamming them. There's internet marketers that dominate the space that just pump tons of money into advertising with good sales presentations. Yep. And they, they don't know the first thing about dating. Some of these multi-million dollar products, they were content farmed out to India. There's not even a shred of truth in the dating advice. Yep. So I, I just you want know, to pause on that. Yeah. And I've actually met, you know, having been in the industry and an organizer of a lot of these guys and people not that I've never even uh, worked with, but just have met and know this industry. You're 100 percent right. There was actually this thing called the Seduction Syndicate back in the day. And it was just that's kind still, of that's still around. Yeah, still around. Yeah, they're huge. I'm, I'm, they added me to that, but it's yeah, it's a bunch of fucking it's cross scamming, basically. Yeah, it's this massive scamming. All they do is talk about how to scam guys out of money. They've been doing this for over 10 years. And yeah, like you're saying, they just dump tons of, tons of money into like content farming, getting products made, massive advertising. They get banned on the advertising networks. They go to another advertising network. It's this endless shit show of just fraud. And it's it's been a plague on the manosphere for decades. It sucks. Sorry to interrupt, yep. but I just want to back that up. No, it's all good. Right yeah, but yeah, to, yeah, so kind of to continue that story is... I applied all the the massive analytical abilities. Like like I broke the first hundred girls in 2012 with just purely mystery method, and that so I, and then I took an RST boot camp because I kind of bought in the Kool Aid back in the day just like everybody else. And it, when I was at 103 late count in June 20 towards the end of June 2012, I realized I was like exponentially light years beyond Tyler and Todd who were the instructors. And then I like it became like a personal. That's kind of like when the pickup bug like set in, and, and I set in, 
set onto this path of like massively evolving and optimizing the system. So I, I show my results graph. Um, am I able to, to share my screen and show that graph real quick? I did, uh, I did. If you put a link in, if there's like a link to it, I can do it. Yeah. I don't know otherwise how you can do it on StreamYard. I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, there's like a, there's like a share button down at the bottom. Or let me see if I if I click share. Um, oh, maybe you can do it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can, can do, do it. it on my end. Let me just pop it up real quick, just to show people the, the exponential progression. I was just on Bulldog Mindset's channel, and I showed them just to give people some kind of context. Nice. But basically, this this is a, I kept exact track. Like there's pl there's plenty of people that doubt this. I know it sounds like a huge number. I kept exact track all the way through and have more proof than anyone of this. I took it pretty seriously because it's one of the only ways to measure uh, results progression. So let me just share and just show this really quick here. Um, let's see. Yeah, I can't see anything yet. Just you. It's good. it's going to pop up in a second. Let me know oh, if you can it see it. Yep. Yeah. So, so this, this right here, it basically took me about 10 years to hit the first hundred girls. Then it was about a hundred girls a year for a while. Then my best year was 246 new in a year. Once I dialed in on a lot of the texting and setting dates straight to the house. And this isn't fully updated. The The current count yesterday was 1,321, nice. uh, which is, which is ironic because the, the 21, actually your name too is, is my name backwards. There's, there's been some guys that have emailed me and thought I was part of 21 studios because they get the surname yeah. and and first name, except I heard people, you know, you screaming about you the other day, and I thought they meant me because they kept saying John Anthony, John Anthony. I'm like, are these people just retarded, or what the fuck's going on here? Yeah, a lot of, a lot of people like, I don't know, in other parts of the world, they, they look at the surname and call you by that. A lot of people call me Anthony on the channel, which makes no sense. But anyways, um, my whole process throughout was just to find anybody better than me at any particular area of game. Who's better at day game, texting, keeping girls around, night game, whatever it may be, and what are they doing? that's better than mine and then split test it. So it's a very scientific method, split test it. And if it puts out better results with enough data, then adapt the system accordingly. And kind of the basis of the system in 2012, I was put in this forum called Top Beasts. It was the, this website, Top Beasts. And it was supposed to be the best 30 pick of artists in the world at that time, based on our field reports, um, people vouching for us, a whole variety of factors. And what I did was I, I befriended all those guys, kind of vacuumed up all the knowledge of what everyone was doing and did a massive comparative analysis and took the common overlapping key areas. And that's what formed the basis of my system originally. So it has like the best parts of mystery method, the best stuff I could garnish from naturals. Um, a lot of the, a lot of the advice out there is just pure trash. So, yep. uh, you know, the, I would say like the vast, vast, vast majority of the stuff that's on YouTube and the Facebook groups is, is way off from correct strategy. Most of the key elements to what actually gets results are not even mentioned. I think a lot of people do that on purpose, but a lot of people just don't have the skills and long story short, um, at the, at the end of the day, like the system is extremely, extremely, extremely optimized. I, I drove in a lot of innovation as well. I was constantly scanning for weak spots and, and suboptimal pieces and fixing whatever I could. So I just treated this in a very nerdy sense, like a big optimization problem. And I also made it extremely repeatable. So when I train guys in the, in the modern day, there's no uh, BS, there's no fluff, there's no abstract woo -woo principles that don't translate into practical strategy. And guys literally are just plugging into an optimized system where I define all their texting, define how to do all the different pieces, and they just end up with a whole stream of dates. So I show them how to run the dates, how to close the dates, how to keep the girls around. And guys are very frequently able to do like 50 to 100 gr new girls in a year, or at least, you know, it's not all about racking numbers, at least get their dream rotation or dream girlfriend as fast as possible. So that's kind of my background. That's That's the big difference from what I bring to the table. And I'm also one, I think the only, I know you do a little bit of it too, but in the pickup world, the pickup community, I'm, I'm probably the only coach that actively calls guys out. Yeah. And a lot of guys misinterpret that and think it's for attention or to hate on people that are bigger than me or a marketing angle, but it's really just, I have a big passion for the game. I devoted my whole adult life to this, to optimizing this. And, and I put in the blood, sweat and tears to get what I believe is by far the best system and have all the results to show that. And then you have a whole, a whole lot of guys in here that are just spouting scam nonsense, ripping people off, paying girls to be part of lifestyle shoots, you know, like Jason Capital and Max. You, you've got guys that are purposely misleading guys with the content like RSD and, and Derek Moneyberg, where it's been discovered that they're, they're, telling, they're instructing their 21-year-old kids that are building their products to purposely mislead and confuse. And wow. all this stuff is just focused on upselling other products. So... Yep. You know, even though I'm not as big of a name or as big of a channel as a lot of these guys, because my business was largely word of mouth because I deliver the goods. Uh, these guys, you know, are, are far more popular because they drove shitloads of marketing into building their whole scam image. And and just look around. No, nobody's really getting very good. No, no company out there is churning out very good guys to pick up, you know, besides myself and, and playing with fire, I think. Dude, Our RSD team. was was some of the worst. I mean, I met a lot of these guys in person. They're fans. These like little groups of RSD, 
The RSD fanboys were the worst. Like they literally were the worst guys at picking up girls, and they. It's they, a they it's a cult. Them. Yeah. Yeah. They made they, they turned them into weirdos. They told yeah. them to do like fancy, gamey, gimmicky stuff. Guys were getting punched, getting slapped. They were telling you to open, yeah. calling a girl a bitch or a whore or a dog, and just stuff that's going to perpetuate you uh, sucking yeah. and pick up so that you need more of the solution, right? So that's how they're able to deliver thirty products. Now they're selling boot camps and packs of four. I know guys have taken 12 boot camps. They don't know how to run a night game interaction, which I can explain to them in an hour. Yeah. You know, so without without beating a dead horse, that's that's kind of the backstory and the context of this. And, and for those of the those of you that are familiar with my content and, and that subscribe to my channel, when I attacked Max, as expected, he he made a whole targeted coordinated attack and uh, put a put a, you know reported mass videos since the, the beginning of my channel. And so my channel was in danger of going down. I'm I'm not able to post for a week. And I had to prep it all the roast stuff for now, but we're basically just cutting out any kind of personal attack stuff from the roast and we're going to put them all back up. But nice. that's where that stands with that. You know, so it's, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to lead the fucking good fight and open people's eyes. And a lot of people are waking up to this stuff, yep. but it also comes with a price. You know, I also care a lot about getting the guys good. I don't want to sacrifice the channel over, you know, these, these fucking assholes trying to censor yeah, you, them. You're doing, you're doing a public service, to be honest, and you're getting called a villain for it. You're getting stabbed in the back and you're getting shot for it. But I, I, I believe, honestly, what you're doing, man. I, I understand that you're, this, uh, you're abrasive, you're kind of brutish. I'm all about it. I think it's great. There needs to be a lot more of that in the manosphere. And the lack of that is a lot of the reason that these guys suck. They suck with women. They don't understand men. They don't understand how they get defrauded. And in my view, this problem's been going on for probably 15 to 20 years. I don't know that oh, yeah. here in the 90s too much. I was not in it until 2005. But since mm -hmm. I got involved, this has really been a serious problem and not enough people talk about it. They just well, there's no, there's no quality bullshit. control. There's no quality control, right? Like yeah. nobody, it's on face value. Everybody everybody promises the dream, um, which I guess is your nickname. Anthony Dream but, Johnson, <laughs> the dream baby. But every, everybody, everybody's promising. Like I've watched some of these video sales letters. Like, like for those of you, just a real quick example. This kind of like sums up a lot of these other products. A Tau of Badass, right? That was on ClickBank. John Benson, the professional copywriter, wrote that product. They content farmed out to India. Yep. Joshua Palacier or whatever was the was the supposed face of the product. But I ran into Tim Houston at a, at a marketing conference, and, and I said, hey, that product's pretty much all bullshit, right? He's like, oh, yeah. And, he, and he, I said that in a video, and he's like, oh, you can't. You know, he was drunk when he said that. But I already know. I went through. It has no resemblance to anything having to do with good game. But that product, they were making like 50 to 60K a day. It was leading yeah. <clears throat> all products on ClickBank for months because what they did was they wrote a, a very compelling sales letter that really harped on the pain points of impressionable young men yep. and sold them the dream. And Pandora's Box is another one. And guys like yep. me don't even know these products, but they made millions of dollars. Pandora's Box is a team of super affiliate marketers that are just preying on the pickup community and preying on the guys who need to fix this stuff. Yep. And what they're saying in their sales letter is that Amazon, Google, and Facebook got together and had a, a classified project to decode dating, and it's been declassified. And now you can have, you know, you can have it for sixty-seven dollars plus all these these upsells. And they say that like they just throw out false statistics, like eighty-seven percent of people have a threesome in their first few days after purchasing the product. And I can't make claims like that, so so I can't compete with scam claims. I tell guys, you know, coming from a guy that's banged at this time of the video, one thousand three hundred twenty-one girls. My close rate's ten percent. When I hit a thousand girls with about ten thousand phone numbers, right now there's like thirteen thousand one hundred something. It falls roughly about ten percent, which other top guys have confirmed. Uh, Paul Jenkins said that was about his his close rate, and he confirmed that others. I know Paul. Yeah, so, I know yeah, all these so products like, too. I've even I've been to like seduction syndicate meetings, like marketing meetings in Austin, Texas, yeah. and they're scumbags. Like they're absolute yeah. weirdo scumbags. Yeah. Everything you're saying is honestly true, and it's so fucked up. It's this dark underbelly mano swamp. The shithole element of the manosphere, the shithole wing of the manosphere, and it but sucks. They're pump, yeah. They're pumping shitload. They're literally pumping millions of dollars into paid ads. Like so, they're, reach, they're reaching the most people. And if you're a guy that doesn't know any better, you say, yeah. "Oh, I know Amazon and Facebook and Google. This must be something that's really solid." Oh, that's not too expensive. Yeah. You know, then there's all these upsells and there's recurrences and all these things. And but the thing is, is like I can't claim 87 percent people are going to three. So I can't. I can't even claim guys are going to close more than 10 percent. But nobody wants to hear that. Yeah. Right, like girlfriend activation system with Christian Hudson, another fucking bullshit product. They yeah. said you don't even need to approach the girls will come to you, right? You just do these things and the girls will approach you. So, so they're they're making it. It's like in the fitness industry where like, you don't need to lift weights, you don't need to eat right, you can do whatever. You just need this this pill or this or this stupid system here, and it doesn't work. But they sell they sell exactly like the easiest path that guys can just say, okay, I don't need to approach anymore. I don't need to worry about approach anxiety. I can have a threesome with 87% chance, 
right? And and then they just they just fall prey to this stuff. And then they bounce from coach to coach to coach. And I speak yeah. to guys every week. Hey, I spent 50 grand on products. I, I have no results. Hey, man, I've been beating my head in, into the wall for 15 years. I'm ultra depressed. And I fix these things in a matter of a week or two, right? Like I, like I had a virgin client that came to me at age 28. He had taken six trainings, like three RSD, like a Todd V, natural life, so all this stupid shit. Nobody got him laid. He was super depressed. He was like on the verge of suicide. I walked him through and like, you know, painstaking detail, like how high the odds are that we're going to get them late. I'm like, dude, literally once we, you get a pro photo shoot, I have a team of girls pick your top five photos. We apply face app and Photoshop and get those aesthetics maxed out. You plug into my message sequences to go from match to phone number. You plug into my tech sequences to go from phone number to date. You're going to have a stream of dates. There's no two ways around that. So like at the very minimum, you're going to have a whole bunch of dates and a lot of them will come straight to your house based on my tech sequences. So you literally just have to know how to close at the house and how to run public dates, which we dialed in on. He got his first lay in day four and he, and he rocked the chick in bed on his first time too, because I have a sex training in there. And he said, the chick was like, this is the best sex I had in my life. And I just had another guy in the program was a Virginia. And she said the same thing. These are virgins like knocking out of the park, hardcore on their first time ever having sex. And he got eight lays in the program in eight weeks. And, and that's better than most guys that have been doing this for 15 years. Yeah. So yeah, they end up just being dabblers. They float from like, you know, camp to, you know, pick up school to pick up school to pick up school to coach. It's a disgrace. Coach. There should only be yeah. one training. I tell guys on the calls, you don't need, this isn't like, okay, you, you take, you dabble in mine or you're on the one part of your journey. I'm going to permanently fix the problem for you, you know, for better or worse, if that's good for business, I don't fucking care. I don't even know how I would teach this stuff in a way that's purposefully misleading the guys. You know, I don't even know how to talk about game and pick up in a way that's like woo woo or abstract it's it's yeah. it's very systematic and strategic to me so unfortunately too that's just the norm it's just an endless cycle of bullshit and word salads and you know really vague stuff from keyboard jockeys this is you know 80 percent of the manosphere has been that i'd say for a long time and it sucks and i'm really glad you're speaking up and doing something about it and yeah, yeah, yeah and you i just take heat for it massive heat and that's part of how oh yeah goes, man. I yeah guess, i, I mean, have the same kind of the same issues you know yeah i've had rsd was 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 pushing all kinds of slander and stuff like that saying i was a rapist and that i you know i've never been accused or charged with rape that's a fact but they push that everywhere and they push that so popularly a lot of times my name comes up oh isn't that guy that got in trouble for rape never been accused of rape never been charged with rape so, right Didn't so one of their coaches julian blanc talk about raping women or tyler get caught on video tyler, yeah tyler did about yeah some old field report post about about putting it into a stripper in the morning and she was yeah. like that was all of cnn and shit too yep. yeah yeah but yeah, I mean, like, like I've been, I've been invited to conferences and stuff. I saw like RSC Papa was on a conference list. He, he contacted the organizer. Oh, don't let that guy in. He's a rapist, right? Yeah. Never, never, ever been accused of rape. Never, ever, in 1321 closes, never yeah. once accused of it, never, never charged with it. But that's, that's what they push around. They, they were telling people for a while that I threatened Owen's kids. I didn't even know he had kids, mm -hmm. you know, so they're, they're, it's very, very low blow type shady shit. They, yep. they 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 um, got my old Facebook group removed. It was just filled with, with massive content that was super helpful, and I put up a post like dishing all this dirt on different RSD coaches. Group goes down the next day. My Instagram, I put like two or three hundred closes in a row of proof, and then I was at a, a conference talk in Poland. I was ripping on RSD Tyler, and I was like, "By the way, guys, sign up for my Instagram." Oh, was that uh, 20, 2019, The conference in Poland. Yeah. Oh yeah, was, we had one in Poland too in July. I think that was right after us in August, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I heard yeah. about those guys, yeah. But yeah, my, my Instagram went down during the talk. And now, once I bring up the Max, like like basically the, the summary of the Max video I made was that he's paying girls, like there's proof of this. He's paying girls to be part of a fake lifestyle, right? He's not banging them. The girls on his harem are just girls that are being paid, literally on the payroll, right? And then he posts all this shit on Instagram trying to be like Dan Bilzerian, who also pays girls. I know that from because I'm in the poker scene. I know guys that are close friends and he pays guys and Dan Bilzerian pays guys and girls that are around him to be around him. And, but um, Max is doing that to create this, this fake lifestyle image. So that guys sign up for his course, he sucks a pickup from, from numerous reports on the, on the inside. He's just, he just plays video games all day. He sucks a pickup. His freedom business mentorship course is like a 1% success rate. He, he went from pickup scamming mentorship to a business scamming. Cause it's yeah. a, a wider, a broader audience. Cause the pickup is a little bit niche. A lot of and, guys do kind of bounce around. Oh, yeah. The, scar, uh, the dude, scams stay the same, though. Exactly. And, and they're all, like, using the same marker that Ty Lopez uses. It's, just, it's all it's all one big steaming pile of shit. But anyways, I put out the Max yeah, exactly. video, ripped on his girlfriend, and he got the video down for fucking cyberbullying. 
right? And 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 then he's reporting shit from two years ago, three years. These all happen at the same time, so it has to be max. Yeah. So I'm going to come back like 100x over the top. We already have a class action lawsuit being prepared with tons of victims from Max's mm -hmm. program. Excellent. And I'm just going to continue the attacks without any, you know, without violating any of the stupid PC rules. Yeah. But that that's, you know, we can get into other other questions you have and yeah, stuff. Yeah, let's get into let's focus more on game. I do want to get into the, these issues more uh, later in the show, the fraud okay. and this and that. But this is a good opening kind of dialogue on it. I'm yeah. all about it, man. I really appreciate it. And I know you could take a lot of heat for it, and uh, keep keep up the good fight, man. It's a good fight, and the community needs it. It needs guys. It, it should be men leading the community actually get laid if that's what they focus on. If they're a coach for that, which I think these, is what you do. These, these guys are so warped that they look at it backwards. They think that anyone yeah. like calling people out is yeah. like doing low vibration shit. They yeah. think that like they they think like to be a man, you just need to like take abuse and you need to just like take shit laying down and like oh. thank people like for like walking on. No, you. That, that, I think and I'd like to hear what you think about it, but I think the community is basically just by definition, it's filled with beta males. It's filled with guys who suck with women, which means they're conflict avoidant and they hate conflict. So when they see yeah. conflict, they get really angered by it. They get upset by it. They get triggered. They freak out. And they revert to what their life, their lifelong pattern of behavior is, which is to shut down conflict. No conflict, no conflict. Which is also yep. the exact reason they suck with women, or one of the main reasons, I would say. Yep. And cognitive dissonance plays a huge part as well. So, yeah. so those of you not familiar, cognitive dissonance basically ap applies to you trying to rationalize. Like let's say, like when I when I attack RSD Tyler, right? Guys, guys have come to worship them. I talk to guys that think he's at like five thousand lay count. They have posters of him on on their wall. They think like Tyler is like you know, second to, to like Jesus Christ. And when I show all this objective reasons of, of lying, of scamming, of purposely misleading, of being in bed with like all the fucking scammers and him just focus on extracting as much money as possible from these guys. And that's his Dude, only I, focus. I've talked to his own instructors, guys that have retired from RSD, guys that you haven't discussed yet. Uh, I, I know a lot of these guys and they say, they've told me flat out, Tyler's a massive fraud. Like he does not get laid. He lies. Now he's yep. gotten laid. I mean, he's not a virgin, obviously, but he lies on his own conferences. He lies to his own guys and he rationalizes it. They'll be out with yep. him the night before. He won't bang a chick. He'll go on stage, say he banged this chick. Yep, happened. I, I witnessed this multiple times. I worked for yeah. them for three months in 2012. And he, well, he, he rationalizes though. He's like, well, it's a better story for education for yep. the guys if I tell them I got laid. And the guys are like, you didn't fucking get laid though. Like, it's you a went complete, home. It's yeah. a complete facade. It's a complete facade. But the, 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 yeah. as it ties into cognitive dissonance, is that guys hear this. And they think I've put a lot of money into his shit, a lot of time, a lot of effort. I've drank the Kool Aid. I'm so indoctrinated. For yeah. me to, to acknowledge that this is all a fraud is going to like crumble my world. So instead, I'm going to say this guy's a hater. This guy's just jealous. This guy's low vibration, et cetera, and dismiss all his objective, logical, rational points so that they can protect their ego and protect like this world. Cause it's really like it's, it shatters their entire world. Would you it's say like, it's we, also like a sunk sunk cause fallacy, like in gambling? They're just kind of like they're so invested. They spent three, four thousand oh, yeah. dollars. They don't want to give it up. Yeah, yeah. But, but the thing is, is that I, I've been hammering so hard on it. Like I've really, like you know, to possibly to my detriment, we're putting the channel at risk and stuff. But um, I've been hammering so hard, and I've been getting so many emails where guys are like, "Okay, that's the final nail in the coffin." Like you can't, you can't get around it. Even his own video editor, like that, that was editing Tyler's infields, is like. Yeah, his uh, quote unquote game is like nothing special whatsoever. Right. And, and when we're like, when I'm telling stories of, of like massive amounts of lying, when, when you see like he's using the same marketer as Derek Moneyberg, and we have like insiders that created Derek Moneyberg's course that are saying like he told us to purposefully mislead and confuse. And he's just constructing all his content to upsell other things and he wants to extract as much money as possible. But I have lawyers involved in this shit. They're, you know, I'm sure I'm fucking publicly public enemy number one to these fucking pieces of shit. But they are public both, enemy number one. To, what's that? Me and you both, man. They hate me too. But they're. But the thing is, is like, yes, learning strategy is is one of the most important things you can do. But ditch ditching all these guys that are literally against you, but pretending to be on your side is like right up there at, at top of the priority. Guys, like, why do you focus so much energy on on hating on these guys? Because they're fucking making you go backwards. That's yeah. why. Like, if like look at to anybody watching this that follows any of these fucking idiots, right? In the RSD community, the natural lifestyles, Todd V, like pretty much almost all of them. Look at your results. Are you happy with where you are? The 99% no. I know that for a fact. I, I, it's much less than that, actually. Hardly anyone is getting good. Hardly anyone is fixing the problem. My students do that very consistently. 
but hardly anyone that follows these guys is getting good at pickup but they'll defend them to the bitter end and the whole the whole manosphere and pickup community has has like stopped giving a shit about results as well yeah. like guys guys label as me label as me label me as the weird guy that cares about getting laid that cares about results that cares about tracking how many girls you've been with and they're well, taught let's, like, let's actually let's pause to get into that a little bit i mean you've banged yeah. a thousand women there are very few men who've ever lived who have banged a thousand women less less than one percent i would say you know not just now but for thousands of years like i said mm -hmm. some Genghis Khan level shit. i'm all about it you know i think you know some men are going to do it and then some men are going to not only do it but be able to teach it be able to talk about it which is puts you in an even rarer camp of individuals so let's get into some questions uh what do you say to some very kind of generic responses like this Banging a thousand women is degenerate behavior. Trad cons would say this. Maybe feminists would say this. What is kind of your basic response to this kind of accusation or, or slander at you? You know, degenerate, uh, you're a sociopath, whatever. Um, okay, so first of all, like most guys that are like into this stuff want to bang a lot more girls. But again, it's this is another cognitive dissonance example where just like guys that can't get hot girls, they label all the hot girls as bitches and a waste of time and like not good partners. I just, did, I just did a whole video about that where when I showed all the dating coaches, ugly wives and girlfriends, everyone rationalized it and said, oh, well, these girls, first of all, must have perfect 10 personalities. Second of all, like beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Uh, third of all, all hot girls are not worth getting into a relationship with or marrying. And then that's just all like totally absurd. I've dated hot girls all around the world and there's, tons of nine plus looks girls that have awesome internals as well right and, and but guys are all rationalizing that so it's the same thing when you bang a lot of girls most guys are not banging a lot of girls so it's easier to say oh that guy's just some big weirdo right and I, i've had like eight monogamous relationships i've had um you know i usually run like 10 to 15 girl rotations it's not that's not like the full priority i do plenty of other stuff right like i do like martial arts i have a whole bunch of hobbies I do a whole bunch of shit with friends. It's not like this like soul one track focus where it's like do or die, just go for the lay count. Just because you just because you banged a lot of girls doesn't mean that's all you do or that it's that's the only obsessive focus. It's just the result of having a high skill in the game. Like when they, when those guys talk to girls, they're hoping to bang them too. It's except yeah. the difference is it usually doesn't work out because their skill is far lower, right? So it's not like yes, I ran more volume. Like I have thirteen thousand one hundred phone numbers in my phone. So like yes, but I'm 37, right? I put in I put in the time, and I and I was living in a lot of the cities where I that were you know I did Vegas, Miami, San Diego, Warsaw, Kiev, uh, Lisbon. Where have you found Where have you Rome. found some of the hottest women in the world? Top two cities, hottest women. Um, I would I would say where I'm at right now, Florianopolis, Brazil. I've been here a year. Oh wow! And um, it, yeah, I mean it's South Brazil. It's basically like like Europeans came and colonized it back in the day. So you have like pretty European faced girls with Brazilian bodies. Nice. Right, so it's, it's and there, there's a stack genetics. You, I was at a event. There's a club here that's five thousand person capacity, all open air outdoors. And last year during carnival, there was um, like a costume party, like kind of like an American Halloween. So these chicks are in like little tiny outfits, and I would say upwards of seventy to eighty percent of them were above an eight. And so yeah. and this was thousands of girls. It, it was like rare to see an unattractive girl, and you, I would never see anything like that in, in the U.S. Obviously, yeah, never. Where, where eighty percent are obese. Now, how's that compared um, to a place like Warsaw, Poland? You've been there too, you said. That's that's probably my number two, I would say. Like, in yeah. Warsaw, I had, I had a rotation composed. It's like a melting pot of Eastern Europe girls. Yeah. So I had a rotation that was composed of Ukrainians, girls from Belarus, Croatia, Lithuania, Latvia. Yep. Um, you know. Uh, I love I love Warsaw, man. Man. It's been a month in Warsaw in 2019. It's beautiful. Um, it's unbelievable woman. It's amazing. Yeah. I was there for over a year. Yeah. And, and, and you can go literally months sometimes without seeing someone overweight. It's, it's like yep. almost like seeing someone in a wheelchair, which is fucking yeah. crazy. Because then you, yeah. I land back at home for Christmas or some shit, and yeah. it's like being on another planet. There's like creatures walking around that are just fucking disgusting. Dude, I came back from Poland, and my first stop in America, the layover was in Chicago, the airport. <laughs> and I get back, and I see all these fat women in fucking yoga pants and sweatpants, and it smells yeah. like McDonald's. McDonald's. You just fucking smell it. And it's the opposite of Poland and Norway and these countries in Europe where the women, none of them are fat. A lot of them are really, really hot. And it doesn't smell like fucking McDonald's and sweatpants everywhere. The, the difference it's, is massive. It's yeah, and it's not just the physical thing. I have a video on my channel uh, on my John Anthony Lifestyle channel um, that's mm -hmm. called uh, the diff like Eastern versus Western women. And it's I, I basically like you know coming to mind at random order. They're more feminine. They're more elegant. They're more respectful. They flake less. They play less games. They take better care of you. 
et cetera, et cetera. If, yeah, if you search for Eastern Eastern versus Western, you might have to do a search. I think it's like a year and a half old or so. Or just type, type Eastern. Um, but all the internal, there we go, yeah. top one there. All the internals are, it, it's, it's such a massive, massive difference. Like there's such better quality women internally and externally like once you have a taste of that there's like yeah. no reason to ever live in america again like for those for those of you that are in america but that's why it sucks covid is i wanted to spend a couple months in europe again last year and then fucking covid hit and fucked all that up so i was like god damn it because i got i got my, i heard about this for years right the eastern european women are beautiful amazing inside and out and i'd been to europe before but not eastern europe i'd been to scandinavia i'd been to you know western europe and shit so i'd seen like a tiny bit of this but it was nothing like what i saw in poland amazing yeah and yeah it's hard yeah. it's hard to go back to america it sucks it's a bunch of fat oh, yeah. tanks. yep did you did you get a chance to to interact with many of the internals too besides just looking at them uh i fucked a couple of women when i was there i went to krakow too in the south i wanted uh -huh. to do the 21 convention in krakow in 2020 but then covid mm. had fucked that up and maybe we'll do it this year but probably not because that shit's still fucked but yeah, i love Kr it yeah krakow is uh, more of a student student town i guess yeah, and it's much. It's uh, it's not as much like a big. Yeah, it's smaller. Like it's smaller. Old old city too. It's like a thousand years old or some shit. They had like castles. Mm -hmm. Went to the castle. Yeah, you, that used to be the former capital. It's like seven hundred fifty k. I'm like half Polish. Okay. My mom's whole side's Polish, so nice. it was interesting to see. We have like relatives out there and shit still. But, but the women are amazing. I mean, you go there. These women are hot. They're young. They speak multiple languages. Uh, they yep. don't have this bad attitude. They're feminine. Educated. Educated. There's hot, hot, smart girls. I, I feel like in the U.S. they they like push all the the hot girls away from because it's, it's it's such uh, negative social repercussions. Yeah. Basically, I, I remember I was in like math league and chess club and and playing the violin in the orchestra, and yeah. once girls started getting tits and getting hot, all the hot girls like ran away as far as they could from academia, Jesus. and it was like it was cool to skip class and cool to be a degenerate, yeah. and like and the, and the ugly chicks didn't care, right? So you know, not to sound fucking sexist, but in American culture drives a lot of the hot chicks away from, you know, intellectual pursuits. Whereas in Europe, they think it's cool to be smart. Yeah. So you, you meet these, like my, my girlfriend in Brazil is an engineer, right? Like she comes on the channel and, and, and guys are like, Oh, like she must be high maintenance cause she's hot and they, you know, but she's super cool. There's like tons of chemistry. She's an engineer. So you can, you can have like the full package girl and they, like surprise, surprise, they can be hot. Right. Yeah. So, that, but but yeah, I guess to answer that question, we can jump on to the next one. Um, it you know I was driven a lot by the you know the the fucking childhood verbal abuse. Like of course, like there was some need for external validation there. I'm, that's, I'm not gonna, gonna gonna deny that. But I for, you know for it could be way higher. I'll, I'll put it that way. Like I I kept the quality very high. I have lots of proof of that. Guys think that I must have just like plowed through lots of fatties. If it's so high, that's not the case. It, keeping the quality high is simply, you know, whatever the bar is, seven, five, or eight. You yeah. don't put, uh, you don't put girls in the funnel that are below that. So you don't cold approach girls below that. You don't swipe on girls below that in the apps, and that's how you quality control. And so you, just have, but if you're in a place that where the bell curve shifts, and most of them are hot, and plus most of my lays are from America. Like for the record, guys are like, oh, you just rack up lays in third world countries. I've been in Brazil one year. I was in Poland for about a year, but you know, when I arrived in po in Poland, I was at like nine hundred. And most of wow. most of the lays were from from the U.S. So, um, but yeah, we can we can jump into the next question. Well, here's yeah, it brings to mind the things you're talking about here. So, my experience, I like to hear what you think about this in the manosphere. Even since 2000, the 2000s, the pickup community, when that was kind of the more dominant uh, center of the manosphere, I've noticed it. And the RSD guys were really bad with this too. They say they bang like eights and nines or sevens or whatever, and then you meet the girl. Oh and yeah, and it's not That's that. They they they, exactly. they embellish this shit to to ridiculous levels. Yep. They bang they bang fours and fives and they call it sevens and eights. Yeah. And sometimes there's lying. Sometimes they actually believe it though. And it's, yeah. it's like yeah, bro, you're delusional. So well, that's what's that was the experience. That was the purpose of showing the girlfriends and the wives, right? Did you see that video? Because I yeah, private it. Some, yeah, and you nailed yeah, it so with, it. The, with the ones I saw. You fucking nailed it. I know. Yeah. So it's like here, I've like met, dude, I've met some, I've met some of these women. Some of them are grosser than they're grosser than you realize, dude. And I've met them. Yeah, like no, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm, well, I'm well aware. But it, it's, it's, it's a disgrace, yeah. and, and all this like defense that they must have ten personalities. Get the fuck out of here, right? Like, mm -hmm. even if that were true, and that's just a, a cope cognitive distance rationalization. Even if that were true, she's still ugly. Like, and, and I don't care if that sounds shallow or sexist. Like, don't be a fucking dating guru and, and bang up an, an ugly wife or an ugly girlfriend. Like, get it, get it the fuck together. I tell, I use the analogy, if a guy was giving like a, a talk at a make money online conference and he's like, here's my bank account, it's under $100. 
Okay. But by the way, now I'm going to teach you how to make a shit ton of money, right? Like who the fuck would want to listen to that? Right. But, but, the, well, but you, the reality, you just, you just described like 90% of internet marketing people selling like oh, yeah. money shit. That's how that shit works. It's crazy. Yeah. But, the, but the reality is like, like continue to use that analogy instead of showing the bank account with a hundred dollars, which is what I'm doing when I expose these guys is they're saying, Oh, I make millions of dollars. Yeah. I make millions of dollars all the time. And then what that does is it makes people actually pay them so that they can get the millions of dollars, right? Like Max hires these girls for the lifestyle shoot. Jason Capital was found out by Manhor to be hiring girls four hundred dollars to come be part of a lifestyle shoot. He puts oh, you that know, shit on I know Manhor. Manhor is a uh, is an old speaker at Twenty One Convention from way back. I lived. I lived with Manhor. I actually, I actually got him arrested for assault in twenty thirteen. Oh my like, god! What the <laughs> fuck? Whoa! I haven't talked to him in a long time. I was not aware of this. Jesus. Christ. I, I I moved. He hit me up like back when I was like coming up in the forums. He's like, dude, I think you might be the best guy in the world of this stuff. He's he's like, I want you to come and live with me in Vegas. And I was like, you know, I, I thought he was cool at that time and, and this and that. And and we lived together. And then he kind of, I was like outshining him. And he's like, I'm supposed to be the best guy in Vegas. I don't like, I was getting a lot of attention. And we had a falling out. And then, you know, it kind of like escalated, escalated. And then he like actually hit me in a casino. In Vegas, but he had been like put piling on numerous threats for weeks and months trying to like terrorize my life. And yeah. so when he hit me, when he hit me in, a, in an area with can, with a camera, uh, and they came, and the security saw it, and they're like, "You want to press charges?" And I only press charge not to be a fucking dick. That's not my nature, mm -hmm. but just to fucking end the terrorization, right? Mm -hmm. And then surprise, surprise! Two weeks later, Derek Moneybird comes to town. Hey, I'm in town. Don't let anybody know I'm here, and I get arrested. Okay, and that's the only arrest I've ever had in my life, and that fucking destroyed my entire reputation. And it's a whole other fucking story. But everything yeah. points to a setup, and the key witness in that in that case was found dead, twenty eight year old, and it, and these motherfuckers, like I'm I'm very, you know, I don't want to get into different uh, legal aspects on the channel, but I'm, mm. but let's just say that, you know, that was a setup, and and they're still they're still out free, walking around free. Damn. Here's a question: You fucked over a thousand women. The thirteen hundred and twenty one is the number, right? Yep. It's a hell of a number. Twenty one is a great number. At the end of that, um, <laughs> yeah, you what is thank, thank the girl from last night for that one. That was yeah. It slowed way down because I I'm I'm living with a girl I'm normally with a lot. We have like nine girls in threesome rotation. I've got fifteen regulars on the side for one on one stuff, and there's three hot girls living in the house. So it's on demand threesomes and foursomes. But the girls in the house know that I have my own side shit and I have the threesome rotation and my girl does pick up with me. So it's yeah. kind of the whole the best of all worlds here. They, but, they probably well, figure this out when they meet you. I mean, this is like, they sniff it on you. They smell, they smell the vagina juice on you. This is a woman art. Yeah. They smell it. They smell it a mile away. I, yeah. I hear that a lot on first dates. They, I get branded as a big player right away. I don't, I don't talk about banging a lot of girls to these chicks. When they ask, yeah. I'm seeing other people. I tell them I'm always busy with work, which is technically true. Jesus. And uh, you know, the, the, the frame is always, I don't think it's good to put out a fuckboy frame to these girls. If they ask me how many girls have been with, I say, I don't keep track. Yeah. Uh, probably like 15 to 20. I just give them the acceptable standard answer, right? But that's, you exactly, don't wanna... that's exactly what a fuckboy would do, though. They know that. They're like, oh, this guy knows. That, they, a lot they, of guys they, they, they see right through it, man. Yeah, bragging stupid. Yeah. This is great. Well, what, was, what was the question? What, you had a question tied to that? Yeah, my question is, you fucked over a thousand women. What are some of the craziest stories, like maybe top one or two, that you can share on the air? Because obviously, look at that many women. There's probably stuff you can't share. I know I have stories I'm, like that. I'm writing. Yeah, I'm writing a book. It, it, I'll put it this way: like it, okay. it was, just, it was like living like a rock star. I lived, I lived in all like the party cities around the world. Um, I got connected up with a lot of the best guys in the game. Which, you know, this sounds arrogant and all this stuff, but I, I still see myself as very far ahead of of almost everybody else. There's the next best guys I know in the game have real lay counts of around like six to seven hundred now so i'm almost like double the you know and that's not to say there's not guys with higher counts than that uh, there's plenty plenty of celebrities and athletes and stuff like that but guys are have like you heard of, have you heard of ratisse jared dwyer uh, ratisse? yeah yeah he's fucked uh, about as many women as you have he's an awesome dude an old friend of mine an old speaker actually yeah. a 21 convention yeah he kept exact track uh i don't know if he kept exact track but i saw him mow what? down 50 women in six months at my house okay. together that's yeah, solid. He's a, yeah, he's a beast. Last I checked, it was in like 2016, and he was like seven, eight hundred. So he was, uh, okay. he's, 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 he reminds me of you a lot. You and him would get along, I think, in real life really well. I don't know if he's as good of a old is he? Um, he's probably a little bit older than you, probably like 39 at this point. I'd okay. have to kind of, he's, he's older than me by a while, by you know, 
considerable amount. Yeah, I don't, I don't, like, I don't doubt it's been a lot. But anyone that wasn't keeping exact track, usually there's like vast overestimate, overestimations is what I've found in most cases. Like, yeah. like guys, are, guy, a lot of guys, because it seems like you, you've banged a shit ton, right? Like, but if you're unless you're no, keeping guy, track, this guy really has like he, yeah. Uh, I saw him out with my own eyes, like fifty of them in six link, months. Yeah, link, link me up. I'd, I'm always curious yeah. to connect with those guys. I'll, I'll send yeah. you his speeches. He's he's fucking savage, man. But I don't know if he, you, yeah. I think, are good. I, just from what I'm getting, I suspect you are good at coaching, like you're saying. And it's a rare talent to have both to be able to mow down that many women with that much focus. Well, the, the and thing you have is the methodology too, too. Yeah, the, yeah. The thing is, I'm like a hyper analytical machine. Like like my big interest outside of pickup. Are like health and longevity optimization, um, like nanotechnology, artificial intelligence, robotics, molecular biology, genetics. Um, you know all these all these super quantum physics. I'm really into all that, like the singularity, like uh, the, the technological singularity with advanced artificial intelligence overtaking. This is I'm still deep down like a super closet nerd, right? But I love optimizing systems, right? And, and this, you know, poker and chess were very very fun to optimize, but nothing beats the game, right? The, the, with the real life interactions where the reward is hot chicks and in va vagina and like you know it, a lot of that's what i was trying to allude to before is there's so many stories i'm writing a book there's so many stories like almost every night out is an adventure like when, you, when you're going even if you don't get laid there's usually some kind of fucking crazy shit that happens um if i had to think of uh, it's it's hard to, to pinpoint you're just looking for like shock value or like outrageous yeah just outrageous shit i mean you've been through a lot of, I, I have no doubt just talking to you like a lot of shit so what is maybe like one or two stories that are just fucking nuts what, what are they going to read in your book for example um let's see so yeah a lot a lot of crazy shit happened in vegas when i lived in vegas in 2013 it's because basically like you know nothing nobody it's like the city never sleeps it's just all like mayhem at all hours um there's a lot of crazy shit that happened there. Um, the kind of I went, I tried to like max out, like see what I could do in a weekend. I went to Charleston, um, South Carolina, South Carolina, yeah, South Carolina. Yeah. Uh, uh, what was, it must have been January of last year, right? So January 2020, and I I like switched my Tinder uh, to the, to the city beforehand, and I was like, all right, I'm gonna see like how many I can physically bang in a weekend. Nice. Right. And so I, I, I went there and I, we also hit clubs and like did, I did a lot, of, a lot of approaching and stuff like that. And it was just like balls to the wall, like trying to get most of them to just come straight to the hotel and like just just really like trying to max out as like a test. And in three days, I'm getting 18 lates. Right. And I have a whole video about it, like detailing it all. Jesus. Um, if you jump on my channel again, the, the 18 in three days. Which Are you would, in a bag or in shit or just going or like how is this going? Um, the only the only thing I do for like sexual performance, I've actually never tried Viagra or Cialis just because of the, the negative health aspects. Uh, just maca, right? So, so I take I take typically like um, this one's a seven fifty, but usually it's usually it's a five hundred gram dose. I take like two of those in the morning, and then I take two more between <clears throat> every round of or not every round every girl. So like between every new girl, but you you can you know you can without any problem shoot like ten plus loads a day. Like it it, it basically I'm sure you know, but it it increases libido, um, yeah. strengthens like, like erection strength. Um, decreases recovery time, increases stamina, et cetera, et cetera. I'm 37, right? And it, I actually just started um, a TRT like two years ago, the testosterone yeah. replacement, just because my values were like upper 200s at that time. And I, I think I, I honestly probably fucked my endocrine system from uh, just all the nights. There was so many late nights in the club and I was like binge drinking for 15 years. I quit drinking about a year and a half ago now. But I was I was in the clubs binge drinking. I was, I was you know, I was going hard, as, as hard as I could with the game. For, for many periods of my life where, where I was sacrificing sleep and nutrition and all those other things. So my testosterone was like, get, at one point was the level of like a, almost a 90 year old man. So um, I, that's why I started the testosterone replacement. But uh, we have a question from the audience here we can hit actually from yeah, James sure. Neal. How do you protect from STDs? And I've heard you've had a vasectomy too. Is that true? Yeah, I got I got a vasectomy in 2014. Uh, I got three girls pregnant in 2014. A, uh, a check. I don't have any kids that I know of, but I, I got a, a Czechoslovakian girl pregnant. We went like eight or ten rounds, like in a, in a, a basically one night stand environment. And then she like ghosted, ran into her club like two months later, and she's like, "I got pregnant. I didn't know how to tell you. I was really, you know, it was like a traumatic thing. I, but I got an abortion already. And then I got this Ethiopian girl pregnant." And it, she had an abortion. And then I got a Peruvian girl pregnant that same year. And she wanted to keep the kid. And it was like a month of like, you know, very stressful arguing back and forth. And she finally got an abortion. And I was like, all right, enough, enough is enough. This is irresponsible. 
And uh, there's a lot of myths around vasectomies. Most people think it's a permanent thing or that there's gonna, it's going to make you less of a man or something like that. All it does is permanently block the vas deferens. Well, not permanently. It, it's reversible. That's like the other thing. So it, it can be reversed, but you can also freeze sperm, and your sperm is more vital when you're younger. So I froze sperm when I, when I did it in 2014. So I have sperm from when I was 30. And um, it's you still produce sperm. It just doesn't go into your semen. And, you, and your semen is like 5% sperm. So it's still it's like the same loads, like your libidos. Everything's the same. It's just like a, a, a foolproof mm -hmm. condom, right? So um, I do tend to go raw with a lot of the girls. But that being said, I've only got chlamydia three times and nothing else. So chlamydia... Yeah. And, and none of the three times was were there symptoms. It was just caught with routine testing, and it was gone in one week with a, a Zithromax pill. And like really, the biggest effect it had was having to tell the rotation, and you know whoever wasn't seeing, uh, whoever was whoever was just seeing me, then they knew it came from me, and you yeah. know that that would cause some problems. I had a, I had my a married, understanding, in my understanding, STDs are obviously a serious thing, but they're way overblown. Like way, high. way, way overblown. Yeah, I have a whole video yeah. about it on my channel where I go through all the statistics. Basically, okay. everything's curable except for AIDS and herpes. HIV is, is largely in the gay community and the, in the drug using community from, you know, unprotected anal sex. So basically if you're not, if you're not doing unprotected anal and you, and you're not uh, hanging around with drug users, the, the odds are extremely low that you're going to ever catch HIV. Um, you know, that being said, there are, there are things that prevent HIV as well. There's a, there's a daily thing you can take that, that prevents it. Um, with, with herpes, uh, the vast majority of the population has it and never shows symptoms. So, and it, you know, there's all different kinds of variations of that, but it, like I have a couple of advanced friends in the game that caught herpes and they just take, um, whatever the fucking herpes medication is. They just take that, like you can take a preventative dose. So you never have an outbreak. So S I think STDs are like extremely, extremely overrated. Um, not to say that they don't exist and this and that. And, you know, uh, the kind of the counter argument could be like, Oh, well, um, it's irresponsible to be passing like, you know, if you're asymptomatic, like you know how a lot of people have HPV, but yeah. it's not as dangerous for a man. Like, you like I actually check have, it though. there's no way to check it though if you're a man, right? There's no test for it. That's no, they, there is. Program. No, there is. Hmm. That like there, there's certain strains that they can test for. Like, like they found that I have that as well. But I think it's like 80 to 90 percent of, of people have it, and that like if if that's passed to a woman, like she can potentially get cervical cancer. But women can get checkups and stuff like that for polyps and this and that. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. You know, it, it, most guys think just just due to misinformation that a vasectomy is permanent and that if you have unprotected mm -hmm. sex that you're going to just, you know, get some crazy thing and, and it's going to be they like also think They also think condoms are like perfect, that they protect you from everything, which is not even, which is not true. You can get herpes from a girl's leg. If, you, yep. if she has that on her fucking leg and you rub her against her leg, that's, it's skin to skin. It's not like dick to vagina. They yeah. I think condoms are like bulletproof and it's not even remotely like that. But then at the yep. same time, STD is overblown. So it's just fucking... This cloud I'll, of clusterfuck of misinformation. I'll, I'll put I'll put it this way: most of the advanced guys I know, like the, like four hundred to six hundred count range guys, most of what's called her or not herpes. Um, what the fuck's it called? Uh, chlamydia. Uh, two to like seven times. I think one of my friends caught it like seven times. Oh fuck! <laughs> so it it's, it that seems to be like the main one. It's the and, most common. Yeah. Yeah, like I, I had a buddy. We we were on like a we were we were running a tour. We did like Vegas, like a a, a boot camp tour. We did like Vegas, L.A., Miami. Uh, New York and London, and we we both in Vegas. We went to, um, or no, we did this in in uh, in LA. We went to uh, the, the fucking clinic together because we were both getting like chlamydia, like, or you know, we were, we we thought we had chlamydia. We, we just got the shot anyways because we hadn't had an STD test in like six months. But we like did a whole video on it. it was, but that's yeah. that's really like the main the main one, and it, it it's it's like we're it's like less than like a common cold. Basically, it's you know because it's. It's gone in a week. You take one pill, it's gone in a week, right? So, and, you, and you usually don't have symptoms from it. So, yeah, this is fun, man. This is great. I think a lot of guys, this is a window into what it's actually like to be a player. And in the manosphere, it's hard to find this. Like most guys don't oh, have yeah. like this. You're, you're, <clears throat> I, you're savage. And um, this is what it's like, man. You live this life and people need to see it. They need to understand it, I think. It's so few, to, it's so few like and it. far between. It's very, very few and far between. I, I think I can count yeah. the number of extremely good guys on one hand. Someone said, what, what about hepatitis C? Um, I think there's a, a vaccination for that. I think that's what, um, what Tom, Tommy Lee yeah. or Pamela, Pamela Anderson caught. Um, I'm not super familiar with it. It's definitely dangerous, but I think there's the treatments <clears throat> for it have been getting a lot better in recent years. I'm not 100% yeah. on that. People can look that up. 
And yeah. and as a side note, and, and God forbid, you know, I ever do catch HIV or something like this, but God, um, I, I had a friend, an Italian friend, who did like a PhD on HIV, and this was back in like 2012. And he's like, let me put it this way: he's like, if you were to catch HIV, you're going to live a long, healthy life. He's like, they typically live even longer, longer than most regular people. First of all, the treatment stuff is so good now, and second of all, the um, uh, the per the person's like extra health conscious. Not that I would ever want it, but if you look at the real stats, unless you're you're doing raw unprotected anal sex, it's it's, it's even if you bang someone like vaginally that has it unprotected, it's like incredibly, incredibly unlikely to get it. Yeah. And just to be clear, we're not doctors on this show. This is not medical advice. Yeah. This is just uh, information and discussion. So I'm not legally liable for any of this shit. Yeah. A good point though. Magic Johnson's had HIV for 30 years. Yeah. I'll try, I'll try to pass on that. Like I've banged about 10% of what you've banked and I'm pretty happy with that being in triple digits. I don't have any desire to hit four digits. That's champion level shit. That's like legend shit, legend status, legit uh, respect to that. But if I end up banging, you know, 187 women in my lifetime or 212 or something like that, it's, it's, I'm fine with that. I want to build a family. So my goals are maybe a little bit different than yours. I don't know if you have, well, I don't, I don't have, I don't have a big lay count as a goal anyway. Like that's, that's kind of a mis, a misinterpretation. Like I did have, I did have a hundred as a goal, like back in the day. And I thought that was like impossible as a lifetime goal. Cause it, you know, yeah. it's all relative. It seems like a, a very daunting number, but now Dude, the, was, the average American man has a, has a lay count seven. of seven. Seven. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Seven mm -hmm. over a fucking lifetime. Seven. Yep. You bang more than that in a weekend. Yeah. That's hysterical. <laughs> it's sad. And we're not meant to be monogamous. I talk about this on my channel all the time. Like only 5% of mammals are monogamous. And I, I've, I've read a, extensive amounts in neuroscience and cognitive science books uh, just because I almost did a PhD in cognitive science. And they, they say in the neuroscience books that there's uh, <clears throat> anatomical proof that homo sapiens are not meant to be monogamous. They found that in certain species of monkeys, there's, they're wired to be monogamous and they fuck with that part of the brain and it goes off and starts mating with everyone else. What they found is the natural state for homo sapiens is we're supposed to have one main partner and a bunch of side partners. So kind of what you see with like animal kingdoms, like in the tribes where you have the alpha leader and he bangs all the females in the tribe, that's how it's supposed to be for us. But the church and the state came along and said, oh, we can control people easier in familial units and so you guys should all be pressured to get married, right? And that's why the divorce rates are so high. That's why people are all cheating. And that's why I don't, I don't think I ever want to get married or go down that fucking road. It's, it's a nightmare. And you look at any like 70 year old man that's been in love for 40 or 50 years, and he's still going to go check out that 18 year old with, you know, with the hot body walking on the street. That's who he'd I, rather be. And uh, in a generalized sense, you know, I don't disagree because it's super dangerous, especially today. I mean, men are getting divorced, raped. You know, Kanye West is about to get divorced, raped. You know, yeah, Jeff, Bezos, that, yeah. Jeff Bezos, you know, CEO of Amazon is about to retire from CEO or whatever. But that dude lost billions. I Mackenzie, mean, yeah, Mackenzie Bezos is the richest woman in the world right now. Yep. Just because of that. And what did she do? She didn't earn shit. She just stole it. I mean, it's, it's yep. fucking billions, not just, you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands or millions. I know guys personally that have lost five hundred thousand million dollars in a divorce. Mm -hmm. And that, that's brutal. But, you know, billions, like, holy fuck. Like, it doesn't even matter who you are. You can be one of the richest man in the world. It doesn't matter. You could fuck. Well, yeah, you the, fucked. yeah, what's what's even more messed up is like, like kind of like the justice aspect of it. Like, I, I know of a story, my, my uncle's friend, um, he basically, he, uh, he like, you know, worked really hard. He was like the sole breadwinner in the family. The wife was staying home with the kids. He like provided them with this really nice house, sent the daughter like a good school, all this shit. The wife was banging some dude behind his back, okay. right? He comes home early from work. He catches them in, in bed together. She divorces him. She gets the whole house. She gets most custody of the kid. And the, and the kid is like dating like drug dealers and shit. And he's like, I don't want her doing that. And she's like, fuck you. What are you going to do? And she gets uh, payments from the dude. And he didn't do anything wrong. This was this was all something she did. But she took the house, the custody of the kids and ruined his life. And he has yeah. to keep, and he has to continue to pay her. And she's getting like a lot of money from the new guy. Dude, I live in Florida, and in Florida, they have lifetime alimony. Same with California. Lifetime. Mm -hmm. Forever. It almost got changed a couple of years ago, but then it failed at the last minute. The governor vetoed it or something. Rick Scott back in the day. Loser. But uh, no, in a lot of states in America, it's not every state, but a lot of states have lifetime alimony. Other states, 10, 20 years, whatever. It's crazy. But even lifetime, man, it's like fucking slavery. You're an indentured servitude to some bitch who stole half your shit, and then you're going to pay her for the privilege of fucking her 20 years ago forever. Like, it's insane. Yep. Absolutely. The same, insane. same with child support. My best friend in college, yeah. he had a one, he had a one night stand with a chick that was like a little busted. He was wasted. Chick said she's on the pill and it's okay to come inside. He comes inside. Five years later, him and I were on a trip in London uh, on a vacation. He gets an email. Oh, I had the kid. Don't worry. I'm not going to come out to you for child support. 
We get oh, back. How'd, how'd that end up? He gets a court order, DNA tested, matches. The judge orders five, four years, whatever, four or five years back child support, and, and he's got to oh. pay payments until the kid's 21. Yep. So, and, he, and he's never met the kid, never wants to. She's raising it with another dude. It's just like a 25% dock in his income for 21 years. Yeah. From a, from a one night stand. It's and guys like, oh, but I don't want a vasectomy. It takes 15 to 20 minutes. It's a local anesthetic with a micro incision. There's no, like, no pain. There's minor discomfort, you know, after the procedure for like up to a week. Who gives a shit? And it's like under a thousand dollars or like free with insurance. Honestly, it's I'm a little bit. more, uh, I, I do something similar. I don't use, I don't know, a vasectomy, but I'm, I'm kind of more, uh, what do you call it, like a wild gun with it. So I use, uh, I call it plan A. And uh, it's plan B, but they eat it beforehand. You give it to them beforehand. And it has oh, like okay. a really high, it's a really high success rate. It's over 95% used correctly. <clears throat> I think the way I'm using it's even not, you know, guys, this is not medical advice, but I think it's even more effective. So for now, that's, that's usually what I do because I don't trust them. And oh, they're on, they're on the pill. I don't fucking know you. Like, yeah. maybe, you know, this first, second time I fucked you, like, I don't trust you. Yep. If they can show me the exact pill thing, maybe I'll trust them that one night, but I still, that I get Amazon.com all day long, plan B, you know, for fucking dirt cheap. It's 10, 15 yep. bucks and it's fun. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and the game changes even further. Like, um, you know, in, in Brazil and Poland, for instance, it's illegal to have an abortion. So, yeah, right. Yeah. You know, and, and guys that are trying to do like the pull out thing, like, like sometimes you, you can fucking start coming before you even have the sensation. You know, even, pre-cum, or even pre-cum as sperm. Pre-cum, you can, yeah. With, with repeated rounds, there's like still shit. Yeah, it's, it, the condoms break, like the condoms fall off. It, yep. it's, it's to me, it's fucking stupid why 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 people aren't mass doing vasectomy, and mostly because it's misinformation. Most people think, well, I want to have a family someday. Oh, surprise, surprise! Not only can you still have a family, but you can preserve your sperm when it's at its healthiest level before there's more like genetic yep. damage and all. There's, there's just so much stupidity and misinformation out there. It's it's, it's insane. Now, with vasectomies, though, it, I understand the sperm is pretty reliable uh, freezing it, but is the re- reversal 100%? I've heard it's not 100%. My, my doctor, that I, I went to one of the top doctors in the U.S., he's, his reversal rate is 97%. Okay. And he said he said he can reverse it any time, but if you freeze sperm, then you can just use the, the frozen sperm, which if I were to, were to ever have kids, <clears throat> which I'm leaning towards a no, but if I ever do want to have kids, I would do the thing of playing God. I don't believe in God anyways, but I would, I would match up like a, a sperm egg pair that had the most desirable. First of all, you can, you can weed out, uh, you know, genetic diseases. And so you can weed out down syndrome and all, you know, these other different, um, syndromes, but you can also choose the height. You can see 3d models of the face across its whole life. It's all information and encoded in the genetics. You can know its voice tone. You, you can like, it's like build a bear, but you can, I, I stay up to date on a lot of these genetics things. You can you can literally choose like which combination has all the stuff that you want. So I'd rather do that than roll the dice, you know, and and, and then maybe end up with a kid that has you know a big problem, you know. So I think that's the smarter move. All right, well put. Uh, so here's a question. It's something kind of uh, general, but I really want to hear your thoughts on it. What are some of the main reasons, the core reasons that men today suck with women? Not just in the manosphere where it's filled with like. You have guys who are damaged. You have these frauds teaching bullshit. So there's a whole cluster of fucking there. We can get to that. But even just in general, American dudes, why do American men suck with women today? They're having less sex than they've ever had. There's more betas than ever. I mean, you, you, this is not like a secret. So like, what are some of the main reasons for that today? And like, how does that relate to what you teach? Well, our generation, like we had, you know, it's like in Fight Club. We, we have no fucking great war. Men are Men are not working with their hands like they used to. Uh, lots of men have become very soft. Uh, the, the women have become like extremely empowered and, and are walking all over them and guys aren't standing up for themselves. A lot of guys have poor male role models growing up, right? So they, they don't know what it, what it means to be a man. They haven't had to, you know, put in blood, sweat and tears like, like our grandfathers and shit where, you know, a lot of them were, were doing hard labor jobs, working long hours, fucking, you know, walking to, you know, all, all kinds of, of hardships being endured. And, and guys nowadays like are, are inconvenienced, like getting off the fucking couch to, to go microwave a meal or something. Right. So it's, it, uh, uh, that's, I talk extensively in my channel about how a lot of guys are pussies and, and don't stand up for themselves. Like a lot of guys couldn't last in a fight. A lot of guys just let people walk all over them. And, and yeah, of course the, these role models they have are, are, you know, in the same boat, the same beta fucking boat proclaiming to be these master alpha like like rc tyler is my favorite example this is about like <laughs> he's like the classic stereotype of about as beta of a guy as you can get that's like putting on like the most full try hard uh attempt to be the coolest guy ever and just failing like flat failing 
like the camo the camo shirt and like the indoor sunglasses and the dog chains the, the dog tag shit and like rocking flannel shirts and he thinks this that this massive charisma to this cult following that, that he's like massively misled with countless lies and building of a facade um you know replaces he he's basically he's only alpha to them and only through a delusion right girls see right through that shit i have videos where i'm like hey and it's not staged either i'm like hey look at this guy in a video for a few seconds tell me your thoughts and, and i I've, I've been with him in person and i've asked the girls like done little like surveys with the girl not not like you know what do you think of this dude what gay weird creepy like super cringe like awkward ugly like you know just all the most like he's worse than most students and he's running around like proclaiming to be the ultimate pickup artist and the ultimate coach and the ultimate master and he's like the biggest fucking loser like like far more of a loser than most of these guys he's teaching charisma does not you know it does not make up for like these massive beta traits across the board right but guys take him as a role model and they want to be like him and you know, obviously you see the result of that. Uh, in my in my 10 years of coaching, I never got on the phone with a guy that said he got good from RSC teaching. It's never happened. They're the, they're the worst guys. Like I really it's have met a lot happened. of RSC guys. They're the worst. They're, but, I've they're seen the most, them in person. but they're the most popular. And, and guys yeah. are like, why do you still hate on them? You've said enough. Well, they oh, were. I, 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 RSD is collapsed. They're gone. Realsocialdynamics.com is dead. The whole, what, literally the whole thing is collapsing. It's, like, it's not true why. though. They're, they're still running. They're still have boot camp schedules packed all year. A lot of this is a marketing uh, ploy. We're done with pickup. They're still teaching dating courses all the time. They're they're still branding it, repackaging it. Exactly. They're they're all they're doing is they're they're branching out to a bigger audience to scam. Now they're labeling it charisma training with Jeffy, uh, high status communication with Owen, which Jason Capital took that scam route. Julian is a transformation coach, right? A guy that that had like massive drug problems that you know melted on cnn like a giant pussy and, and the yep. cognitive dissonance there guys say oh he did that all as an act to gain publicity no he crumbled like a weak fucking beta pussy right yep. and then right. i showed his showed his wife that's like a six and he's putting out a product called 10 game which was the website my game is a 10.com and i make the joke my wife is a six.com right and yep. and you have and you have these guys and, and they proclaim like even myron Gaines in the red pill world yeah, I'm, I'm running through all these nines and tens. I have an email that I showed in a video that he emailed to me personally. Hey, I bang between four and eight quality. First of all, he's slamming out fours, which is disgusting. Second yep. of all, if the ceiling is an eight, there's no nines and tens. It, that's, it's all a full fabrication. Here's, and those the guys, I have, uh, here's the theory I have on this, if you'd uh, maybe comment on it. I think what guys do, if they're not just outright fucking lying and you know delusional bullshit, I think what they do is they consider a 10 the absolute peak of what they can bang on their best day yeah. of the year. So yeah. if the if the best they can do is a 7 or a 7.5, that's their 10. So then when they fuck 7s, they're really like a 4, you know what I mean? So I think that they create like this art like a glass ceiling like for feminist bullshit. They have like this glass ceiling of a 10, but it's really like a 7. And then anything above 7 doesn't even exist to them. It's like a lot of it. like ghosts. A lot of it's image too, like like the extremely abbreviated version of I, I, when I took that Tyler and Todd boot camp, I like absolutely destroyed on the third night. And Tyler brought me to the front of the room, like we've never seen anything like this. This guy like tore it up, all, and that was only at like one hundred three count, you know, at that time. Uh, ten, it's ten x now, and I, and he told a story to everyone how he had just gotten a number off a girl that he claims is one of the hottest girls he's ever met in the game. That was a, like a full blown ten. He said like top three hottest girls he's ever seen. Long story short, I memorized the phone number off of his phone because he had it open next to me. And I waited till he left town and I, I was respectful and I asked Todd, did he bang that girl? No, they never met up. Okay, I texted her, said, hey, I'm friends with Owen. I'm new to Philadelphia, et cetera, flirting. Got her to agree to a meet. And I'm like, send me a picture of yourself. Six max, but probably below a six. Very yep. busted, very gross. And this, he was saying top three best in the world, top three hottest in the world, right? But what story what story should you tell what, why why shouldn't these internet marketers say 87 percent of the people get threesomes what sounds yeah. better so they're just operating under what sounds the best i've never lied about any result i've never fucking faked an infield i've never told any story when you have real game and you have real skills you can fucking back up everything and that's like yeah. that's why i take this so seriously because you can really do that kind of legendary stuff and it can be real Right, but, but you have all these clowns that have made it into a disgrace. It's basically what Jake Paul's doing in the in the fighting world. It's yeah. like at least he's training to be a boxer and this and that. So it's even better than what these guys are doing. Imagine the guy had like you know no no training whatsoever, 
and he's coming in and saying like, yeah, I'm better than all, I'm better than all these fighters, right? That's what that's what Tyler's doing. He, he's disgracing the game. He's setting the community backwards. That's what most of these guys are doing. Yeah, they're they're proclaiming to be the ultimate man, the the I ultimate. Think, I think what's happened is they've created this huge cloud of such systemic fraud that that's like the norm. Like most of the most of the dating coaches and most of the pickup artists are over twenty years now. This has been going on. It's just fraud. It's rampant. Really fucking bad. Most guys' heads would explode if they knew directly firsthand, like what you do. Like you're saying this, and they're trying to analyze what you're saying. Is this guy telling the truth? Is he not? I think you are. I think you're being dead ass serious, deadpan. Oh, I show proof. Admit. It's not. It's not even just an opinion. I show all the proof in all those videos. Yeah. I show. So they don't want to. They'll look at it. They don't want to believe it though. They'll. They'll make it like you're saying the cognitive dissonance, the excuses, the rationalizations. Oh, we photoshopped it. That's not real. That's fake. The set. They'll make like for especially for the RSD guys. It's a cult. They can't get out of it. So they'll make any excuse they can to defend their little their god. These guys all have daddy issues, basically, and mommy issues. You're going after basically their god, and you're so you're fucking with like their religion in a sense. Yeah. That's a, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. Now you mentioned, by the way, Myron Gaines. I met that guy. He was uh, he kind of attended for free. Twenty one convention. I let him attend like our last day. He came with another speaker, and uh, just someone you know I knew. And I thought he was kind of retarded. Not not like <laughs> as an insult. Like I thought he was like mentally retarded a little bit. Uh, just <laughs> yeah, I, I, like he wasn't all there. I thought he was like, kind of retarded because he would he would he would like blow up my phone, like harass me, trying to get me yeah. to teach him a boot camp for like five hundred bucks. Yeah. And I was like, no, dude. And he, and he wouldn't stop. And I, and I was texting my friend Alex who from Playing With Fire who lives in Miami. I'm like, what's the fucking deal with this dude? He's so fucking weird and cringe. And he's like, oh, my God. And this was like a couple of years ago and, and um, a year and a half ago. And now he's like blowing up. Right. And, but <laughs> which basically just, they've recycled a whole bunch of content, like a bunch of my own content, and a bunch of Alex's content and other guys con like Modern Life Dating, this fucking idiot. It, oh, yeah. It, He's literally a product copycat machine. I'm going to go through in detail. I, my assistant's working on it for like two to three months. It's now, see, I, I thought he was stealing his body language course from Joe Navarro, FBI he's, agent. Uh, he stole, no, he Amazon. stole it from uh, Player Supreme, who's a, who's now dead. Yeah. See, that and makes like, a lot more sense to me, though, because he's actually, you're saying what he's now, from what I understand, he's actually, because I thought he was stealing it from these famous print books on body language. Joe Navarro, there's all kinds of these famous books on body language, some of them which are pretty good. But you're saying he actually directly rips off a product and just kind of imports it. And oh yeah, that. yes. That's, Hold, that's like, crazy, I, dude. That's I put out a Corona pickup product. I drove in like innovations that I created, like like stuff that no one's ever talked about that I literally came up with. He bought it with his. He's an idiot. He bought it with Modern Life Dating at gmail.com, refunded it, and then put out a product shortly after that said Pandemic Pickup that had all my own original novel concepts in there that only I had talked about. And then and then he claims like, oh, the login didn't work. And P.S. The product was trash, and obviously those things can't coexist. And obviously these yeah. things that directly came from my course, from my novel ideas, were stolen. Mm -hmm. And then he he stole the product off a dead guy, Player Supreme. So my assistant, with so many people email me shit, and it's such a waste of time. But the, my assistant's been building like this whole thing. He was like a cab driver who was teaching English and was like almost arrested for an Airbnb scam like a year and a half ago. Hey, and Myron was nobody too. And these guys, and this comes from friends inside their circle. They're they're like, hey. Here's a thought. Why don't we just make a whole fuck ton of money just copying a whole bunch of content from other guys and just pushing it to the red pill community? And, and Rolo Tomasi endorses him. Rolo's a fucking retard too. Yeah, let's and, let's talk let's talk about Rolo a little bit uh, whenever you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, we'll jump to that in a second. So so what these guys have done is they've repackaged multiple of my products, Alex from Playing Fire's products, this Player Supreme guy's product, and they don't. And, and what they they're kind of going in suit with Derek Moneyberg. Where they have these webinar, these these webinar things, and it, it, I the, I have guys emailing me extensive reports. There's no game training, there's no business training. That all they're doing is upselling more of their courses. So they've taken a unique scam route of instead of just generating scam content, they're just copying other people's content. They're not good with girls. They're not well, good with that's shit. that's crossing the line from scam to theft. Like that's actually yeah. theft, and you could sue them for that. I yeah, know, I think, but I he's, he's in Japan. Somebody sent me his address in Japan. I'm not going to go like fucking dox him and shit, but I might serve him with a lawsuit in Japan. Yeah, it's a good idea. He's an American citizen. You could sue him probably in federal court and uh, they'd be able to go after him through that state court. You'd have a hard time, but federal court, you could do it that way. And uh, some yeah, I, I have there's lawyers actively compiling shit against Derek Moneyberg, against Max, big class action lawsuits, because what you, what you have is you have a repeated pattern where, where there's multiple victims here all willing to testify that were taken advantage of through fraud, 
through coercive predatory lending, through high pressure sales tactics. They're literally, they're, I'm getting emails. There, there's a whole bunch of guys that are having literal mental breakdowns. Okay. Like this, this is where it's fucking crossing the line. It's crossed the line a long time ago, but literally guys that are, they're signing guys up for, for big loans and credit cards that they can't afford to pay back. And they know that. And they're signing them up and, and extracting as much money as they can. All the courses are designed to upsell other courses and extract as much money as possible. RSD has been doing this. Derek's been doing this. Max has been doing this. And they deliver nothing. The only goal is to empty your pockets and get you to refer as many people as possible. And when they've emptied your pockets, get you to take out as much credit as you can. And if yeah. you don't want to, they're going to shame you. They're going to call you a loser and a, and a fucking nobody. And yeah. I've, dude, I've heard so much. It, it goes way deeper than, than I had any idea. This, this gets yeah. like ultra, ultra dark. A black let me, dude. Let me, let me pause on this because I have more connections in the manosphere to than anyone by far. My, like, I don't have 10,000 women on my phone. I have a couple thousand. But in terms of like actual connections and relationships and first name basis stuff, and the shit that I hear through the grapevine, I'm at the center of everything. And I verify and can back like 99 to 100% of what you're saying. I don't agree with every single person, uh, every single thing you've said, but the, the fundamentals of what you're saying are true. It's a really dark, fucked up path. And the average oh, yeah. guy isn't aware of this. And he, if the average guy was in the manosphere, heads would explode. Like they really, their whole life, their whole life, uh, what you're doing is basically the red pill for the manosphere. It's the red pill that the whole, the whole a lot of the manosphere is very, very blue pill. These fucking beta losers that pretend to be fucking masters with women. And these guys are like absolute losers. They're antisocial weirdos. Yeah. You know, Rolo Tomasi is a great example of that. This guy's a massive dude. <laughs> <girl. laughs> my sister met uh, Rolo one time. And after, for the first time, after she met him, right after he left at my house, she was like, that guy's like an alien. And she's just, and my sister was very candid with me. We're close. And I'm like, yeah, he's like, he's just fucking super weird. And people think this guy like Tyler is this massive player. And dude, Rolo couldn't get laid if his life depended on it. Same, yeah, yeah, same with Tyler. Yeah, it's this fucking massive scam. It's so fucked. It's it's so ultra fucked. Like, yeah, it's a really dark, fucked up world, man. I've had, I've had to I've had to like painfully watch this. Like, imagine you have like what I consider by far to be the best system in the world, right? And I and I've I've proven it for myself. I've proven it for all for these. I've coached thousands of guys in over the years. You know, my business does very well, even though my channel is smaller. Guys know like almost every guy that comes to me. Hey, I can tell you're like one of the only authentic dating coaches or the only authentic dating coach. I, I often hear you and Playing With Fire are the, are the only guys that are giving practical advice that don't seem full of shit, that are doing stuff that I've applied and that it works. Like surprise, surprise, like there's an actual method to the madness. There's a, This is actually a skill game. You can actually apply strategy and get results. So like who would have thought, right? Just guys that want to get better with women can follow a system and get better with women very quickly. Like it, what a fucking concept, right? But, you know, but we don't have we don't have this giant fucking presence and, and the, the marketing wins at the end of the day. So these guys that have just blasted paid traffic, these guys that have, you know, that are that are building these fake Instagrams and all this stuff and, and, and they, they buy fake followers. I fucking I showed with Social Blade, Derek Moneyberg's thing went from 100 followers of April of last year to now he has over half a million. Right. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I showed I showed exactly like direct proof. This is all bought followers, mm -hmm. you know, but what are you going to do? There's still. They're still like massively. They got people defending him. His posters all over guys' walls. It's sad as I've, fuck. But I've, I've done, had to sit in the sidelines and watch this shit, and it's disgusting. Yeah. For I'm in the exact same. I I really you're taking the words right out of my mouth, man. I love it. I've done the best I can to make this community the best I can, and for doing that, you get hate. People hate you for it. They hate you for doing the right thing. They hate you for standing up for things. They hate you for standing on principle. They hate you for combating fraud to actually unite the manosphere to actually do to unite the community and make it a more positive place. That has there will always be fraud in any industry. Like it's not possible to have zero percent. There's no fucking way. But the manosphere, I think, in the dating coach industry and the pickup artist community, there's a really heavy presence of it that's abnormal. Other every you know the fitness industry has a bunch of scams, health industry, all this stuff, right? But the pickup stuff, I think, in particular, is really fucked. It's like, almost double. everyone. Almost everyone. Yeah, it's massive, man. You know, one of the things I do. I mean, Rolo is a former speaker of my convention. This is not a secret. The most, the highest viewed video in the world of Rolo Tomasi is a speech at Twenty One Convention, and I can't vet everyone who speaks in my convention to the T. That's not possible. Yeah, I, I just have, I just have to take chances sometimes, right? These guys have a reputation. They're known. I'm like, all right, here's a stage. It's a platform. You can go speak. So, you know, speak your piece, and I'm going to film it high quality and put it on the internet forever. People are going to get to judge that, watch that, and learn from you. Or say, hey, this is a bunch of bullshit and comment about it. So I, in my vision too, for 21 convention, 
you know, I love my speakers, the vast majority of them, but there's a few bad apples. And I think that the videos and the speeches are a good way to illustrate. It's like a window to their soul, right? What are the, the old sayings? Like, you know, the picture is the window to the soul. I think video is that times 10. So it really shows long term as the time goes on and the bullshit comes out. People like you calling these guys out, they can go back to these speeches, not just little podcast videos in some basement, right? But real speeches in public. Like, what is this guy actually saying? Who is this man? How does he behave in front of a camera? How does he behave in front of a live audience? It's not quite as good as like infield stuff, obviously, but it's a, it's a window to who they are. And yeah. over time, my hope is that the frauds get, they get found out and they get called out. I can't do all of it. Neither can you, but you're doing good work, man. Yeah. And what's cool is like, you know, I'm in with those guys, uh, Spencer Cornelia and Coffeezilla and they're, and they're starting to pick some of this up too. They're, they're okay. blasting Der Derek and some and Julian, um, you know, they, they just put up a whole thing showing how like Julian's doing massive scamming. They're putting stuff up about Max and Derek. So, so even like the more mainstream guys are starting to push this stuff out too. Um, you know, and on that note with, with the convention, we can talk offline, but I'd love to be sure. a speaker at the, at the yeah. next one. If you have, if you have availability. I definitely have availability and you can definitely be a speaker. Welcome to the club. Cool. <laughs> yeah, we talked about it a couple years ago, I think, briefly. Um, I think your account ended up getting banned or something on Facebook. But uh, I'm uh, all about yeah. it. I've been doing it. It's a 15 year anniversary this year and you're more than welcome to come speak. Nice. It's, uh, it's a neutral platform. You can say what you want. It's a Switzerland of the Manosphere and uh, it goes on YouTube. So you have to keep that in mind. I can't uh, control the platform there, obviously. But speak your mind, man. Do your thing. You know, it's, uh, it's TED Talks for. Uh, you know, people like us, people that are hated by the mainstream, hated by feminists and shit. Is it is it in person this year or is it it's gonna be virtual? Oh, always in person. I hate vir virtual shit's super gay. I hate all the virtual conference mm -hmm. crap. It's for scam artists. I hate it. I have to know that with coronavirus and all that shit, but we just did it a few months ago in Florida. Yeah, I don't give a fuck, yeah. dude. No mask, mask free, raw dog and that shit, dude. It was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> we had uh, over hundred guys show up even during the pandemic. I think we would have had a lot more guys. Um, we've had more before, but you know, the pandemic the flights and shit overseas we lost all of our overseas attendees none of them could come in we lost speakers who were, who were supposed to be there because overseas because yeah. they couldn't fly the fucking flights were you know they weren't even going yep. but uh florida has our governor in florida is savage as fuck he has no tolerance for this COVID crap and yeah. uh I'm yeah, you guys are one of the is. most open states i i know a lot yeah. of advanced friends in the states that that moved to miami just to, yep. to keep keep shit moving um Dude, we didn't just do one convention yeah. we did three conventions at the same time we did 21 convention for men we did a 21 convention patriarchs for the fathers and we did 22 convention for women to make women great again, which uh, I don't know if you saw that last year. That was hysterical. I did no, a whole I campaign, see. dude, I did a whole campaign to make women great again and it reached like 150 million people all over the news. Wow. Uh, yeah. you know, Good morning, Britain, Piers Morgan, New York times, New York post, blaze TV, all these fucking TV shows are coming after us, all these YouTube bloggers and shit. It was awesome. They, I mean, make women great again in 2020. Can you imagine like during the you know, political election cycle and shit? People just went nuts, you know, make women great again, but I'm all about it. I think women today are all fucked up. You know, the grandmas are better. So I'm trying to uh, get them back into shape. It's a tough battle, mm -hmm. you know, bunch of hoes. <clears throat> I, didn't, I didn't realize we were so much in line. And I, and I didn't I didn't start lighting into the red pill guys until recently, until I, because yeah. I'm, I'm starting to grow an exposure and guys are emailing me like, you know, yeah. it's, it's the same problem that's in the pickup world. A lot of these red pill guys have yep. gone so far down that rabbit hole. They don't know any skills of women. All they're, they're just going to these dark places where they're resenting women and, and some, and of look the, at some of the best guys in the red pill it is like the pickup community there are some good guys but a lot of them are not especially the guys who are public like a lot of them are frauds rollo is a massive a really good example of that some of the best guys there are the guys who are not public they just write occasionally they don't write much they're not constantly keyword jockeying shit uh they're kind of like guys like you but they have regular jobs so they're not like a public presence you know but no, I, I like uh, i like bulldog mindset are you are you a fan of his He's one of my speakers. Yeah, he's a great dude. I had a, I was on a, a stream with him just like the other night, last night, no, two nights ago. Yeah, we're put his speech yeah. is about to come out for twenty one convention. Nice. Yeah, I was yeah. I was on his channel on Tuesday as well. Yeah, he's an awesome um, dude. He's a very level headed, rational dude. I think he's got a lot of respect for the community. I think he's sincere, and I think he does. There's there's some guys who talk about like uniting the manosphere and this and that, but a lot of them are just massive frauds, and they don't mean that. Well, I'm getting all fucking bright. What the fuck's going on? What, what was your what was your stuff that you wanted to say about Rolo besides the alien thing from from your sister? Oh, I just wanted I just wanted to ask you like a lot of the guys watching. I don't know how many, but some of them still you know they read Rolo, they watch Rolo stuff. Uh, I don't know how many. Some of them. He's one of the co-founders of the show before he resigned uh, in disgrace from the company we had a couple, about a year and a half ago. 
Yeah, he's a total scumbag. I've done a lot of I, videos on this and stuff. I saw your I saw your memes and all the stuff you sent me. Can you give me like a like summary? I'm curious to to see like your your take on things. Like what were, yeah. what were what's the summary of like the the scummy like fraud things that he's done? Yeah, so there's a there's a lot. Uh, I went into it on the stream with Bulldog actually the other night. We were kind of going into some of this, and he, not that he took sides. He was just kind of like you know observing and asking questions. I'll put links in this video too to some of these videos. They're on our channel. They're up. They're available. I'll put it in the cards. I'd say the worst thing that Rolo's done by far. It's way worse than anyone else. Rolo's a much bigger fraud than Tyler than all these guys. You know, even the worst guys you mentioned. Oh. Yeah, Rolo's fucking massive fraud. So Rolo Tomasi in 2018 doxed over 50 men to the New York Times. A feminist reporter at the New York Times named Nellie Bowles. He doxed over 50 men in real life to a, fem a feminist reporter at the New York Times at the end of 21 convention. It was insane. This was extremely what? fucked up. What was I the reason? He he's really jealous of guys like Roosh and Jordan Peterson. And I think he saw the opportunity to kind of burn all these guys and cause a scene, cause like a big, you know, fucking show. I think she was he was hoping she would show up with like a cameraman or a body cam or something. And this plaster these guys in the front page of the New York Times, which would fuck up their lives. You know, male supremacist, Nazi, hates women, blah, blah, blah. The, the, the guys who attend our convention, a lot of them, some of them are salt to do with guys. You know, they're young guys and they're out of college, you know, engineers, whatever. Some of them are attorneys, though, surgeons, doctors, active military, retired law enforcement. These guys can't be on the front page of the Washington Post, or the New York Times, being called and slandered a male supremacist Nazi or some shit. Rolo's fully aware of this, obviously. He's a guy who pretends to advocate for men. And he just wanted to burn all these guys, I think. He didn't give a fuck. Super reckless, super retarded. And then he covered it up and lied about it. He tried to blame Ivan Throne, one of our speakers. He tried to blame George Bruno, one of our speakers. He tried to blame Shift and cover this shit up for eight months before we fucking nailed his ass with fucking evidence and shit. And then he just fucking dodged it and snaked it then. He's like, oh, like, you know, people ask him about it. He won't even fucking answer the question. So that to me is by far the worst thing ever. All the, you know, all the shit that these guys have done, scamming and screwing each other out of money, all kinds of fights. RSD has had their own internal fights, obviously, and shit like that. All that is pretty serious, but none of them that I know of have actually doxed, maliciously, recklessly doxed over 50 men. That's crazy. Like if you had a meet up at a bar tomorrow for your fans, and let's say 65 guys showed up, and at the last minute you doxed that shit to a feminist fucking reporter at a major news outlet, your fans would fucking hate you forever. They'd be like, fuck this dude. That's the most fucked up shit you can do. Short of like violence or bombing or shooting, something really fucking crazy criminal, doxing men is the worst thing you can do today. We live in cancel culture. You can lose your fucking job. You can lose your business. You can lose your family. You can lose your marriage. All that shit. Funny enough, people dox the shit out of him. They sent me all these emails. I'm, I didn't put anything public, but they showed they showed me that he foreclosed on his, on his fucking house. Yeah, that's funny. That sucks. <laughs> which means he's run out of money. Hey, bad and, things happen to bad people, man. You know, what is it? The circle of life. You want to dox? Rolo Tomasi is a known doxer. That dude doxed over 50 guys. You I know, know about I, that's hysterical that he went and did this. Yeah, there's a whole thing. We have a 15-page statement on this. We put out a formal statement. My attorney contacted Rolo. It's a big fucking deal. And we'll see what happens with that. But uh, it's super scummy behavior. And there's nothing... I don't know of anyone in the manosphere ever who's done something like that. You know, you're talking about all this stuff. And I know you mean this and you're into it. And you have the evidence, this and that. That shit's fucked. You know, scamming guys out of money, this and that. But that's not ruining their lives. That's not targeting them in public with a fucking news outlet. That's crazy. That is fucking super crazy and unhinged. That's treason. That is tre that's not just fucking shitty, unethical behavior. Did, I, did anybody crazy. get a chance to, to call him out live and like in a, in a debate or anything like this? So did he did ever try? Did he ever try to defend it or no? He just he just yeah. It's all over the place. You can look at it. He was on his own show. He had this Rule Zero crap, uh, the crap zero, the Cope Zero. I think he called right. You know his guy, his buddy Richard Cooper was like, so Rollo's looking at this guy, and Cooper's like, well, so what if Rollo did it? This is actually on video, and Rollo's just like sitting there, like staring at him. He doesn't give a fuck. He's crazy. The dude's a sociopath, massive. Rollo's yeah. just a failed musician who, who just became an opportunist and a try to try yeah. to scam. I mean, what, what are your what are your you know that's fucking bullshit. What you just described, but what about it in terms yeah. of him like frauding and, and misleading guys and stuff? And, and most all of that. most of uh, I mean, when he's on the issues, he's not always bad. He's a good keyboard jockey. So not everything he says is wrong. I don't. I'm not making that claim. That's ridiculous, in my opinion. Rollo's not dumb either. He's a smart dude. I don't think he's this hyper intelligent genius that his fanboy cultists think he is. That's really ridiculous. He's not even a great writer. Everything he writes is all clusterfuck, you know, jumbled up words and shit half the time. But he's good, for example, at attacking feminism, criticizing, you know, this and that, the shit that women do. But it's all keyboard jockey stuff. Uh, most, anytime, he, let me say this. 
anytime he gets off the issues, anytime he's not focusing on, you know, women and hypergamy or whatever, right? All this fucking shit, feminism. The minute he goes into his personal life, it's all a lie. Everything is not only a lie, it's the opposite. It's the inversion. For example, he says constantly, like, I'm not in there for the money. I'm not in there for the money. I'm not in there for the money. Dude, 80% of his income or more has been coming from the rational male for like years now. He's definitely in it for the money. He's in it for the money more than anyone else. He's a money fucking grabbing scumbag. He's more money hungry than anyone I've ever seen, ever. And I've worked with hundreds <laughs> of speakers. So this this LARP, this LARP, <laughs> like he's he pretends to be this like red pill Santa Claus when the opposite is true. He's a super greedy guy who will dox and burn men to make an extra buck and get another book sale by hitting you know mainstream media like a news cycle kind of thing. So that's just one example. He's just a massive fraud with that shit. Massive liar. He constantly gives on that. He harps on this, right? Oh, I'm this nice guy. I'm Red Pill Santa Claus. I'm not in it for the money. He works 60 hours a week on the rational mail. And most of his income has been coming from this for years. By far. So it's a fucking lie. And that's just one example. Uh, him being a rock star in his 20s, all this bullshit. That's a massive lie. Uh, I think <laughs> he hasn't fucked that many women. He, did, he wasn't good back then. I think he did get laid a little bit, but it was mostly kind of like, you know, fool stuff, just like randomly bumping any of these chicks or just kind of <laughs> having that status, doing some some gig at some random bar. Uh -huh. he's, ne he's never been good with women. These dudes who think he's like a god, like Tyler stuff, it's totally fucked. He sucks with women. He doesn't have, he has, like, he lacks basic social skills. That's how fucked yeah. up this guy is. Tyler does too. Tyler does too. Yeah, it was really it was really sad at seeing it in person. I, and I, I know a lot of guys that hang around him and stuff. He just creeps the girls out massively. Like yeah, he, exactly. He, he like he comes up and he's like, Hey, hey, like he's like, Yeah, how you guys doing? Yeah, yeah. Like he's like, Oh, yeah. I, I don't drink, I don't drink, I just drink green juice. And the chicks are like, We need to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> exactly. And, yeah. and all the fan and all the fanboys are like in awe. And it, it, it's so because yeah. you know, most most of the stories that these fanboys hear are full fabrications. Like what you said about how like the guys saw him go home alone and then he made up a story how he pulled a girl. I yeah. saw that I saw that multiple times. And, and I heard and this he, from instructors that worked with him. This isn't like random hearsay. This is guys who yeah. actually work with him. Oh, even them. his video editor. I put out a thing. His video editor is like the, his quote unquote game. There's nothing special at all. He, and, and it, you know, that was probably a hell of a job watching all this nonsense for hours and having to edit it. But he's got it's gotten more and more extreme. He's like feeding his own image, like the whole Tyler Durden character that he created from Fight Club. It's really true. It's this massive delusion, and I think he believes it himself. It's yeah. this whole alter reality that doesn't exist, and and he but he but, the, but all the fans think it exists, and that's like enough. I think like his whole character is like to feed his like big beta like traits, and yeah. and, his, and his lack of success. And he can just become like you know it's this megalomania in the in this closed kind of microcosm with with these fanboys worshiping him. So he's he's created like he's made himself to be like a Jesus Christ character, but it has no bearing to reality whatsoever. But his yeah, Rollo Rollo is very yeah. similar. He has a Jesus complex. He's a Messiah. He saves lives, <laughs> which is really cut. It's really just uh, fostering codependency in these guys who are already wounded. The walking wounded. They get burnt oh, yeah. out. They get burnt and wounded by BPD chicks and just different women, right? They're really bitter. They are fucked up. They do need help. Rolo offers them a lifeline, but it's just a lifeline to a new hellscape, a new level of hell. And then they get sucked into this codependency cycle that never ends. And even there's some there's some of his fans that actually looked at the do, the evidence of the doxing, like I was talking about, and they flat out told me like, yeah, I believe it, but I don't care. They still <laughs> fuck. I'm like, this dude is a fucking extremely unethical doxer of men that he pretends to want to help, and you don't care. That's the kind of the not all of his fans are like that. A lot of them are very like distant. They don't follow him that closely. But there's a core like 20, 30 percent that are really fucked up. They will follow him to the end of the earth. He can yeah. do literally anything. He can murder somebody. They're not going to care no it's matter what he part. does. Yeah, exactly. You but, know, the Jesus yeah. complex and the Messiah shit. It's, Tyler's, it's Tyler's gotten to the point where like he's telling guys that he's up all night having sex and that he wakes up to like a whole bunch of texts from like girls just begging to get fucked. Right. And I know guys are hanging out with him. He goes to bed early. Like he's like fucking taking care of his kids. He's yeah. not. He's not like plowing stunners all day. It's, it's full. It's full fabrication. Like, and there, there's so much full fabrication, and and so and the line goes so deep. But it, but it's extremely fascinating because there's nobody like keeping him accountable. You know, and yeah. when guys come around and call him out, they do like vicious, like incredibly shady shit to bury them. Like yeah. they they took down. Like I had a big Facebook group filled with massive value. I started ripping on the RST dudes. Went down in like a day. My yeah. uh, my Instagram down. They're attacking my channel right now. I just had to private all the roasts. Max is reporting shit from years back. There, there's just this huge targeted thing coming after me, and that's what they do. They suppress anyone that that you know tries to speak out, and then yep. the rest of the people just just fall hook line and sinker for all the lies. 
Yeah, and the problem uh, at my end with the guys who, and they, they try to do this with me too, right? They do these massive, what Rolo engaged in with me was a massive dis disinformation campaign to ruin, to try to attack my credibility to offset the, the evidence and stuff. The same with me. They, oh, he's a rapist. Oh, The, the problem they have is I have a huge YouTube channel. I have mainstream media attention. I was all over the news last year. Our channel, I have about, I'll have 300,000 YouTube subscribers in like two weeks uh, between all my channels. On this one alone, we had 270,000 today at the end That's of the awesome. day. Congrats, man. So my channel is so massive and I have such a long history and credibility in the community. It's really hard for them to go after me. They try, but I have so many connections and relationships and, and my credibility comes from real hard work in real life with events. I'm really good at what I do. I'm the best in the world at building conventions for this community. That's why I have the only, I have the longest running Manister event in the world by far. We've had over 20 events in five countries on three continents. We've had thousands of attendees and millions of views. We'd, we've done a million, over a million views in the past couple of weeks. Uh, we help millions awesome. and millions of men with good speeches. They're not all perfect. I don't agree with all of them. I don't even endorse all of them. It's not the point. It's a platform. It's an open platform where we get to see open debate and speakers on an open stage. And whatever happens, happens, right? They're going to lie and yeah, manipulate later. That's, that's, that's how it should be. I mean, if you were, you know, if you were like yeah. uh, micromanaging, then it would just be pushing a biased agenda. Yeah, and I don't, I don't want to do that. I can't associate with frauds, so I have to get, you know, roll, people watching, by the way, this guy asked a question, uh, is the evidence of the doxing available for public to read? It is, yes. Uh, you can Google a statement on Rolo Tomasi 21 convention, that should pull it up, but I'll put a link in the description as well. The, the real evidence is a 15-page professional statement we put out when did uh, it, on, the, on this issue. When did this video, happen? October 2018 was the doxing. October 14th, I think, 2018. That's my birthday, October nice. 14th. <laughs> dude it's made it's made uh, made to be man i'm coming on here with a with a 1321 lay count on the 21 convention with a reverse of your name and rollo's yeah. doxing on my birthday yep yep still still can't believe in god even with all Talk, that now the the two main videos i know you had, you had a lot of videos this went private because people are reporting them they're trying to basically manipulate the system to silence you they're trying to censor you of course. I, I, I was confused because i was sharing your videos and then like 20 minutes later they went private i'm like what the fuck's going on but you're gonna put them back up, uh, you know, edit them a little bit. That's cool. I, yeah, I've got an assistant. That's been, any fucking, you know, gray area shit. We gotta gotta stay PC. Yeah, is, yeah, yeah. Is cutting those pizza pieces out of the video and they'll be back up, so they won't have quite as much bite as they originally did, but the message will still yeah. be there. Well, so, so the two ones I saw though that I actually watched, I think almost all of them was uh, the one on. I watched one on you did one on Rolo, but then also on Myron Gaines and then MLD. So talking a little bit more about MLD, I know who he is. He actually used to be on the show way back in the day. I made mm -hmm. that monster. I gave him an opportunity to come on here. I know much about him. So I'm, I'm the uh, the Frankenstein doctor of that, whatever. But talk to me about MLD. What is your, you know, he's you're saying that he stole your products. Like what else does this guy do that's screwy? Does he actually that's bang funny. any women? Does he bang trans? No. Does he bang chicks with dicks? <laughs> yeah, he saw, he saw the one thing <laughs> there. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that people have sent me that, that that's pretty solid evidence for him being allegedly at least bisexual, if not full blown gay. And that's of course wow. alleged, and who knows? But there's a lot of evidence for that. But th what this guy has done, okay, he was a loser driving a cab, teaching English, running an Airbnb scam, n not that long ago, like like year and a half, two years ago, okay. And then he de he decided like his close friends, like like one of his best friends, just like blew him up like with massive screenshots like they had like a big falling out and there's like screenshots of him saying he knows he's stealing stuff from people he doesn't care he's just doing it to make money etc cetera, etc cetera. so so what he's done is he's taken a bunch of good content from various people and repackaged it into his own products and then he's just put out tons of content right and a lot of it's just like nonsense just like you know, just a lot of talk about nothing or like hammering home the same. I know the one that uh, I knew he was stealing stuff. That's what I suspected. Oh, my video froze. Uh, give me a second. I'll fix this. Hang on. Okay. Man. It's a little link issue. One second. Commercial break, people. Ding, 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 ding. Almost. Oh, come on. The fuck. Nope, that's wrong. I mean, I'm going to keep talking, keep talking yeah, about him. Yeah, go ahead. I'll fix this. So, so, yeah, that's the biggest issue I have with him is, is that he's fucking ripping off my shit personally and other people's shit and repackaging it as, as if he's some fucking master. Okay, He's not good with girls. Neither is Myron Gaines. These guys are just little fucking weasels coming in. And they're big fanboys, too. Like I, I've heard from my close people, they, they were big fans of my stuff. And Myron even contacted me for coaching personal, personally, which I showed. 
And and now they're like trying to like make it for themselves and like be a name themselves. But it's all recycled bullshit from other people. There's nothing original there. And the and the key thing is they're not real experts themselves. They're they're just good at recycling information and regurgitating other people's shit. They don't have the actual skills. Like there's a big difference between someone that's just like, you know, copy pasting content and actually having experience. They can't answer quite, you know, advanced questions about game. They can't well, perform. Here's a, here's a question I have because this is something that really stood out to me as another massive scam when I the, the second I saw it. So I saw him put out a sugar dating, sugar baby product uh, months ago. And I, I've actually I actually got banned on your uh, a group you had, not from you, but one of your mods, I think. There was like a jam you'll V group back in the day. And I started banging sugar babies and I found out how fucking easy it was and how hot they were. This is like 2016. And I, yeah. I started writing about that and they like instant banned me. They're like, dude, don't talk about that. It's a gold mine. And back then it was these fucking hot ass chicks that would fuck you like so easy off uh, the sugar dating sites but it's kind of there's like a process to it and i knew the minute this little faggot put out a product on a product on that i'm like there's no fucking way this guy's ever banged a sugar I, yeah i had a system for it and, and let me let me let me clear the air here i don't know how many people are still watching how many people are alive still almost 200 okay awesome um okay so here here's what happened so i was i was collaborating with this dude sonny arvado i'm sure you know who he is the bodybuilder guy i haven't heard Wait. of him he, he had a pretty small following, but he was a pretty good dude, and he actually had a pretty good game. And I'm I'm not gonna really shit talk him. We had our we had our differences, and it was like towards the tail end of like, you know, my massive alcoholism, which which got bad towards the end, and we we had a falling out, you know. So whatever, but uh, he basically like we, we took some low below things. Like I don't know for sure if he was using steroids. He was pretty fucking massive, but I just put out this thing that this motherfucker is using steroids. I just because I thought he was, but I, I don't know if that was actually true. But he retaliated and said. Oh, well, he's banging a couple of girls off, off seeking arrangement, right? And so this other dude, this Red Sky P, is fucking like high school drama. This Red Sky guy, he went through my Instagram. Where I was showing like, I, I put like two or 300 girls in a row, like showing proof of all these hot girl closes, right? And one of the girls had been from seeking arrangement. And he like found her profile on seeking arrangement. And he said, here's this girl on his Instagram that is on, that has a seeking arrangement profile. But I, I have a whole system where I wasn't paying any of the girls. It's just like stripper game. Any girls that are pressing for money, you just screen them out. But you can like it's just a hot girl lead source, just just as you said yourself. Exactly. But this this Red Sky guy said this was the logic. L listen to how dumb this is. I don't know if you even heard about this because because Krauser took it to the next level. Krauser PUA. This oh, Red no, Sky no. guy said if 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 this girl here on his Instagram is a girl that has a seeking arrangement profile, that means that he paid that girl, which I didn't. And Sonny knows that I didn't pay the girl, and therefore his entire lay count is hookers. That's the next logical jump. <laughs> So yeah, do the math on that. And, and and I have like massive infield. I've been showing more proof than anyone for the longest time. I've been reporting the lake out on the forums. Anyone that knows me knows I'm obsessive about it, you know, to my detriment, whatever. But I know the number exactly. Like, And, and I'm also in all these groups of advanced friends. And I send them like a picture of each girl with the details usually with every close. And I've been doing that for like 10 years. And and then Krauser came and he said, oh, j uh, is a massive fraud that only bangs hookers. Because of what this red guy, red sky guy said, which is because of what Sonny said, which came out of just like some differences. So like literally the only like evidence is that a girl that was on my Instagram happened to have a secret engine profile, which means nothing. And Sonny knows for a fact I was not paying any of those girls. I don't fucking well, bang I, I can I can speak directly just in Orlando, which is the sugar baby capital of the world, as I understand it. I think because all the colleges, we have so many and they're so huge, especially UCF, my old college. But all these girls on seeking arrangements, sugar baby sites, the one I always use is seeking arrangements, I say. I yep. even applied yeah, to be a speaker. Too, yeah. They had a conference. I applied to be a speaker at it. I was going to drop all these bombs, but they denied me to be a speaker. I was like, fuck. It would been great. Yep. But all the girls on there are also – all the girls on there are on Tinder. They're on Bumble. Yep. They're on all these fucking exactly. apps. Exactly. And they're at, I'll see these girls out at bars sometimes. Not too often, but sometimes. Yep. And you're like, I saw that bitch on seeking arrangement like two months ago. Yep. So there are normal girls that do this yep. shit and that they're exactly. all dating. They're fucking guys off Tinder, and then they're trying to fuck milk these betas for money off seeking arrangements. So you just yep. have to fuck them anyway. Yep. Yeah, I had a whole system to it. Modern life dating stole the whole fucking thing, yeah. repackaged it as salt dating. And yeah. I, I stick. It's funny because seeking arrangement, the, their lawyers a bit like a little more shit. Like so, Alex and playing with fire, he made like a how to how to run salt game, like how to bang these chicks for free. That caught the attention of Brandon Wade, who started seeking arrangement. He said, "Oh, I'm going to deal with this." Me and Alex from Playing Fire got cease and desist to remove any kind of sugar daddy, like beating the game, like, you know, beating that whole system uh, or, or making a system to not have to pay the girls. They sent us a cease and desist, remove it from your products. And me and Alex were like, yeah, you know, what are they going to do? 
like th they gave us 30 days at day 30 i literally saw one of the lawyers i reckon i just have a really good memory it's it's like almost photographic where i can like just recall stuff very easily i recognize the name of the lawyer as one of the people that bought the products so i get an email every time somebody buys a product and i'm like oh fuck so i got my developer and i had him like scrub scrub the shit you know because i didn't i didn't know what if they were going to try to make a lawsuit or whatever the fuck was going to happen and i removed it but this was before he cop or this was after he already copied it but I, I sent his info and I'm like, here's his salt daddy product and, and go fucking, you know, nice. tell him to take that shit down too. But, um, you know, the, the point is, that's another fucking one that he stole from me besides my, my corner picker product. But, but just to clear the air, because this still lingers, this Krauser article was from like two years ago. And I, I had a guy last night just tell me, like, he just went through my mentorship course. He's, he banged like a shitload of, shitload of girls. His game increased exponentially. And he's like, dude, I've, I've blown like 40, 50 grand on coaching before. You are like, like light years ahead of everybody. It's like it, it's all clicking now. He's like, I I would have came to you like two years ago, but I saw that Krauser article where he was saying your whole lake counts hookers, and he's like, that discouraged me. And he's like, that probably drove a lot of people away from your business. And I still get that fucking shit in the forums and YouTube content. Oh, he's yeah. been exposed years ago. He he only bangs hookers. Like think about what it would take to to bang thirteen twenty one hookers, and and like how do I like so authentically speak about game in all the finest details? And yeah. show so much proof, and oh, good, he must have hired thousands of actresses, and they, like, we get the fuck out of here. Like nobody, nobody is actually able to expose me because I don't lie about anything. I, I don't tell this by talking to you that you bang girls. You're aggressive and assertive enough that you're going to get laid. Like that's really obvious. <laughs> and if you watch these other guys on YouTube, they're all they don't have that. It's all fake bravado, and it's all uh, you can see through it, and just BS. And girls see through it too. They don't want to fuck them. This fucking disgusting beta bullshit. They don't want to be around. Oh them. yeah, like, this fake machismo. I did want to share a book though. Uh, one of all the wrote Salty. It's a book. It's no longer on Amazon, but it was kind of his own journey into figuring out uh, how to do this, you know, salt dating basically. That's probably where MLD got the name for his product from was this book, which is no longer on Amazon. I got one of the only copies before it got pulled. But yeah, I've, 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 heard, I've heard of dude. that. No. Yeah, I, yeah, I still think yeah, we're going to fucking blow it up even more, but I think it's like the <laughs> best lead. It's not really much of a thing in like South America and in Europe, in Eastern Europe. It's more in the Western sure. cultures. But in yeah. America, I think that's the best lead source because it's the hottest girls. Um, the biggest it's, it's, you can direct you can direct message them. They're more compliant. It's like a stunner network on demand. Yep. Yep. Right. So yep. that's, that's, Tinder, that's like, where they ban me from that group. They're like, shut the fuck up. This is a gold mine. because I was like, hey, everybody should go do this. And they're like, shut the fuck up. So I was like, the oh, thing yeah. is, you need you need a good system behind it. Like, I've yeah. I've, had, I've I've known lots of people that have like gone there and try, you know, tried to do it, and like that. I just use burn. I just use dick pics, dude. Get the get them off there. Get them to the phone. Then dick. I have a huge dick, so I just dick pic, dick pic, dick pic. And it, it's just a it's a numbers thing because I I just do that enough. They end up, you know, some of them are like, oh hey, here's a nude, and then you end up <laughs> fucking them. They just come right over. You go to the hotel or you go to their place. So it's uh, it's great stuff, and I agree. It's it's probably the hottest in America. It's the hottest source for hottest chicks. You can still yep. find some hot girls on Mumble and Tinder, but it's a much bigger smorgasbord of yeah, few, yeah, it's more fewer and far between, and you have to wait for the match to come through. And like, yeah, you know, being able to just direct message a girl is very powerful. Being able they're to so direct... they're so sexual on seeking arrangements too. Like they know they're on there to fucking get fucked for money, basically from these fat old babies yep. who are bald. Yep. And then I'm like, hey, I'm 32. I'm worth 20 million. I lie, I put like all these crazy numbers on there because you can put like whatever you want. So I'm like, yeah, 20 million, 10 million, whatever. Yep. How, I worth whatever I feel like, you know. It's a feeling how much I'm worth, you know. There's there's tens, stats tens I think like like half the guys are married and and a lot of the guys don't have pictures because yeah. they don't want their wife to find or they're actually like a high powered yeah. CEO or business executive and they don't want to be yeah. you know, found out. And then yeah. they they open with these like massively sexual giant paragraphs that scare the girls away. And then you know they're just creepy and we you know so when you have pro pictures, yep. extremely solid text game. You like bring all the real alpha traits in person. You just like yeah. contrast so hard to most of the guys on there. Yes, and they don't even give a fuck about wanting you to be a sugar. And I and I never ever do. I never ever like fall into that frame. It's same thing when exactly. I go into a strip club. I don't ever fall into the frame of like a beta loser customer. I, yeah. I teach stripper game actively on like my seven day programs, and we usually get the guy laid from the strip Dang. club. And it's it's as simple as I have like a thirteen point checklist. It's as simple as like establishing yourself as industry, so you're like one of them, not like a, a beta groveling customer. You don't give them too much attention or compliments. I tell stories about how I've dated a bunch of strippers before. Yeah. I talk about how like how I DJ electronic music, which is what I did before pickup on the this side. This is old. School. This is old school PUA stuff, man. Bay stripper game. This is awesome. I've heard this yeah. for years. Yeah. Mystery, well, mystery mystery was spot on with a lot of shit. I mean, him and I used to yeah. talk a lot a couple of years yeah. ago. And he told me, uh, and this I have utmost respect for him, so this is not to make fun of him, but he told me he was in the low 300 count 
uh, coming up on 50, which is respectable. However, I think he could have taken it a lot further had he evolved and optimized the system. And he's too stubborn to collab. I've tried to, you know, we used to trade game theory, but he he's so stuck in his, he built a system and froze it in time and that's retarded. And he's also like almost gone like in the wrong direction over time. Like he was trying to make the case to me that it's not worth getting a girl's phone number. And instead you should, if you don't have enough compliance to get a Skype close, that you shouldn't even take her contact information. And I was like, first of all, dude, most girls don't even know what the fuck Skype is, yes. let, alone, let alone have Skype mobile. And yeah. second of all, like I know at this point, I was, I was coming up on like 800 or, or something like that. And I was like, I know at this point that this is largely about getting phone numbers and working those phone numbers down to dates because on dates you have perfect logistics. So the name of the game is to acquire a lot of leads and mass set them up for dates and then just knock them down. So like the key to close, like Casanova only did 146 in his lifetime. It's because there's no fucking cell phones, right? So there was no way to like work the leads. I don't know how you would work leads over, over letter or whatever, or whatever the fuck they were doing. But, you know, so, so he came out like 146 at that time. That was good. But that's why you said there's not many guys that banged a thousand. It yeah. wasn't even within reach until modern technology. Until you, if you're not leveraging online dating and, and texting, it's pretty tough. Like I did 400. Uh, my first 400 were mostly night game. And then I, cause I thought online was cheating. And then I started incorporating a lot yeah. of online. I used to well. hate online too. I thought it was for losers back in the day. I, I hated yeah. online dating back in the 2000s. Cause that was like, fuck this shit. I'm going to go to a well, bar. I'm going to cold approach and get laid. Well, well, yeah, for, yeah, for me, it was, it was like a pride thing. It was like, I developed all yeah. this like good strategy and I didn't exactly. like that. Like some good looking dude could just come on and like get an easy lay without having to do all, all the skill part. It seemed, yeah. it seemed like a, a cheating shortcut, but at the end of the day, exactly. it's all about banging hot chicks. So that's what happened to me is I met a guy who one of our speakers, Bravo, who I respected and he was getting laid off the stuff. I believed it. I talked to him, met this guy. I was like, Hey, he gets laid and he's banging hot chicks. I'm like, I'm going to stop being so stubborn. Right. You know, there's obviously hot girls on there. You can fuck them. Cause I was so old school. Like I built, you know, I built my skills just by, you know, going out, I approached thousands of women and it was hard. It got blown out a lot, you know, got, you know, these rough nights. I didn't drink either. So it was always like stone sober and you know, mm -hmm. you're not always uh, alcohol is a lubrication, right? When you go. Oh yeah. I, I'm one of the only coaches yeah. that advocates drinking. I, I became sober a year and a half ago. I actually had to go to a, an outpatient rehab for like three months where I was attending group sessions. Cause it got so bad because I, wow. I was in nightclubs all the time. I was splitting bottles of wine on the dates and I'm Irish Polish and there's alcoholism on both sides. So I was genetically prone to it Damn. and it just got, it just went off the rails. And I, you know, I was very public about it on my channel. MLD, that's like his, that's like his whole uh, big angle to attack me. Oh, well, he, he's just an alcoholic. He, uh, I have like a, a thread where I was like, tell me your late count. And he's like, only if you tell me how long you, you went to rehab. I'm like, okay, like man to man, I, I'm holding you to your word at three months. Tell me your late count. Nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so and I put that out on my fucking channel. So, you know, it, yeah, it, 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 but it runs so deep, man. Like, like it's good to hear. I didn't realize we were so much on the same page and you have a much bigger yeah. reach and, and platform. Yep. And I don't know. I don't know. Is there anyone like me that's like really going hard? Like, you know, trying to fucking uncover a lot of this shit and, and put not it out? At the, I'm not aware. Of, well, there's some MGTOW dudes, MGTOW Dictionary. They have this channel, but they're all anonymous. He, that so dude, email, he emails yeah. me a lot. Yeah, I'm sure. He emailed me too yesterday. Or the other He's day. got like a really tiny channel, right? Yeah, it's only 3,000. So I'm, I'm an oddity. Like I'm not full-time, you know, going after people like you are. You're not doing it full-time either, but it's a thing. <laughs> to do. But I have a huge audience and then I still have the the brass balls and the uh, the strength and the steel to do this. It's not easy. You know, I have a whole business to operate. I have three businesses, actually. I've been running it for 15 years. So I've been an entrepreneur for that long. And I really care about this community and I care about what happens to it. I care about its history. I care about its present. I care about its future. So I do the best that I can with the time and attention I have. There are a few other guys that call people out uh, from time to time. I know Coach Greg Adams called out Richard Cooper, pretty hardcore. He's a big YouTuber, uh, about 300,000 subs, something like that. So occasionally, and there's occasionally you see a one-off thing like that. Someone who actually is genuine, who cares about this community, who sees you know these these scammers and these fucking losers doing their fake bullshit, and they'll go to war for it temporarily. You know, it's one day out of the year, two days out of the year. They'll make a video and they'll be like, "Hey, I'm sick of this shit." There's fucking so bullshit. I'm, so I'm like, I'm kind of, I'm kind of more at the extreme then. Yeah, you're, you're at the extreme. I'm, in, I would say I'm at the extreme end too, but not at the volume you're doing it. I'm just doing it with a large uh, scale audience. Which the is best, unusual. the best way I could put it, and this is going to sound extremely arrogant. I don't care. The best way I can put it to all you guys watching is, I feel like the LeBron James of pickup, and the, and these other coaches are basically like handicapped retards in a wheelchair, <laughs> running out, on the, running out on the court and being like, "Hey, come learn how to play basketball from me." That, that have never like been in a championship that don't know like the first thing about real basketball 
that, but, but then like po have high powered marketing behind them. Right. And, yeah. and have a lot of fake stories and have a lot of like, you know, charisma, you know, who, who the fuck since when does having charisma give you like clout in a, in a skill game? Right. Like you could, you could have a lot of charisma as a poker player and not win any money. You know, it, it doesn't mean shit. So, you know, it's, it's, it's very, that's why guys are like, just, you know, you'll win, you'll win the game. You'll win the fight by just putting out your content. My strategy videos are like my least viewed videos. It's, and, yeah. and I'm not doing I'm not doing these attacks for for exposure by any means, but I take great offense. Like imagine you devoted like your whole life, like for better yeah. or worse. Like I had I had a I've got a, a double bachelor's in computer science and philosophy. I've got a double master's in uh, human computer interaction and philosophy of cognitive science. And I was either going to be a, a patent attorney or do a, a PhD in, in cognitive science or philosophy of mind, and either be a cognitive science researcher or, or a um, philosophy of mind professor. And I worked on nuclear missile defense, nuclear biological and chemical missile defense for Lockheed Martin for five years, and then for IBM and Hewlett Packard and Sony before I went full time into this. But I, I'm a very like intellectually gifted, and I've read a lot of books about intelligence. It's, it's almost all genetic, so I don't take personal credit. It wasn't you know it wasn't hard work that made me intelligent. It was genetic luck of the draw to be good at hyper analyzing things and optimizing systems. But when you when you really like spend most of your time like optimizing this, I'm like always thinking about game, always trying to innovate it, always trying to push it forward. And you have these guys come in, like try to look at it from my point of view, everybody watching. You have these guys come in that make it a full on mockery, right? That disgracing the game. When it's at one side, you have internet marketers that are content farming out to India, right? Imagine yeah. this game that you love, that, that you know that you have a real system for that works really, really, really good. And you've helped a lot of these guys. And they're content farming out to India, meaning that, that it has no relevance whatsoever. To and then guys are mass purchasing this. Yep. And I'm talking to guys that bought Taobao. Hey, I've been using the Taobao system for five years. Oh, really, man? How many girls have been with? Oh, I got one girl during that time. Okay, that was probably luck, dude. By the way, that's a scam system. Oh, that yep. makes a lot of sense. They're basically having these nerdy Indian dudes. God bless them. You know, I hope they make money and their country gets better. But these nerdy Indian dudes ghostwriting stuff from across the world, and it's all—it's yeah. just gibberish. It's just complete BS. Like not not a little bit wrong, not kind of you know a little bit unethical. It's like just massive. Full off, full off, yeah, exactly. And but the thing yeah. is, and this was like the the startling realization I had once I realized how how big these internet marketers have a presence and these scam artists have a presence. Mm -hmm. The purchase decision is made before they even see the content or before they even get to try the content to see if it works. And guess what? Content that doesn't work leaves a big void to buy more content. Yeah, right. that's right. Like, like most of the guys come through my program, we have like our, our call at the end of the program. They're like, yeah, I, I can't, almost every time. I have more girls than I know what to do with. This is fucking crazy. This is like, it's, it's usually like getting in the way of other things in their life. They're like, I'm missing work. I'm missing you know, jujitsu, like, what do I do? I'm like, you need to set some, some boundaries, but they go fully to the other side. And they're like, this is the best feeling ever. And, and with, um, and, and that, then they're not a client anymore. Right. It, like I fixed it and they're not going to yep. be a client anymore for anyone. So like, that's not good for business, but I'm yeah. not even fucking doing it for business. I, I like, opt I can't really optimize my system very much further anymore, but I can optimize other guys' systems. And I, I get a lot of, you know, satisfaction because I came from that place. I came from being the shyest guy out of like 700 kids. I had massive social anxiety, massive panic attacks. There were periods in my life where I couldn't even leave the house. Yeah. I grew Did up this way too, man. You said I, you too? Uh, oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't I didn't join the manosphere. I didn't join the pickup community to become a business owner, to become an entrepreneur, to become a conference organizer, all this bullshit. I was 17 years old and I asked this really hot girl to go to a dance. My friend hooked it up basically. And she said, yeah. And I was freaking out, you know, 17 years old, super nervous, had zero success with a woman at that point, virgin. And I was just like, holy fuck, what do I do? What do I do? I went to Google. I typed like how to club dance or something. And I pulled, it pulled up uh, Ross Jeffries and fastseduction.com, all fast seduction. And that was how I got into it. And I was like, wow, I found this information. And I knew some of it. I was like, right. Some of this doesn't make sense. Some of it's probably wrong, but some of it's probably right. And if I sift and sort through this pickup community thing, I'm going to find ideas and I can apply them in real life. And if some of them work, I can like keep doing that and get better and better. It basically it dawned on me that I could improve this whole area of my life fundamentally, like actually solve problems and get better, get a girlfriend, you know, get laid, you know, get makeouts, get phone numbers, all this stuff, which at 17 was massive for me. That's why yeah. I joined this community. That's why I care about it. I grew up in it. I call myself a son of the manosphere. I, I found this community so young at such a young age that it's, it's become the dominant part of my life. In a really positive and healthy way, even though a lot of it's a toxic shit hole. 
And I do my best to lead it and to make it better and to keep driving it forward. And I piss a lot of people off doing that. That's part of the game. You know, I, I lose money when I attack people in some ways. Yeah, so you make a lot I'm of enemies. Being, being, like, I, I actually, like, you know, you and I have never really talked much before. I actually, I actually really like you a lot. I'm just saying that because I'm on your show. But I had heard a lot of, like, bad stuff. Just, But it's the same shit that goes around about me. Yep. You know, it's, it's not really who I am. People are just, people don't like what we're doing. And yeah. so they just spread a whole bunch of lies. Like, my, my name's been trashed across the community. Yeah. You're, between, uh, the, between the arrest setup, between the the myths about raping people, the myths the myths damn. about threatening Owen's kids, it's all fabricated. It's fabricated yeah. just like their claims in game. But then yeah. guys are like, but then guys are like, oh, you know that guy's the that guy's the fucking enemy. That guy's like the antichrist. You're the villain for doing the right thing. That's what that's what the price of doing the right thing is. You're the villain. That's at least in today's world. That's how that operates. We live in a culture that prioritizes all this fucking fraudulent BS. You know, there's a reason it's me and you didn't create this entire culture that that facilitates and enables this to happen, right? This is this is just how shit works. It's particularly bad in the manosphere. I think it's just like seriously worse than other industries where it's also a serious problem, right? And yet, you know, those communities have to sort their own shit out. But in the manosphere, it's been really bad. And you just got to do the best you can with it and make it better, you know? And that takes balls. That takes fucking, you have to put money down on the line. Kick and roll at Tomasi. I put this on the stream of the night on Tony Bruno's channel. Kicking Rolla Tomasi out of my company after I found hard evidence of him being this massive doxing fraud, it cost me a lot of money, a lot, like an ungodly amount of money. And I was happy to do it. You know, it sucked. It was painful. I didn't enjoy it, but I did what I had to do. I made the right call. I'm bigger and stronger than I've ever been now because of it. And I got this parasite out of my life and in many ways out of the manosphere. I wrecked his, I fucked up his whole life doing that. Outing him as a fraud, doing these memes and showing the evidence, this 15 page document and the video and all this other stuff. It really fucking ruined his life, and I'm happy it did. That's what he deserved morally. You know, the fraud and stuff is all this hard stuff. You got to call people out. If you yeah, see fraud, if you see fraud, and don't say fraud. You are fraud. That's how I view it. That's a yeah, yeah, yeah. Quote. Guys, guys come in. Oh, he's saying all this stuff about being a man and being alpha and all this stuff. But but that kind. But a, a real man wouldn't wouldn't call people out. And I said actually, that's exactly what a real man would do. That's right. You have all you these know, beta males trying to police what alpha behavior is. So it's, yes, it's, really, it's yeah. really ridiculous. Yeah. Yes. That's not alpha. You said, why are you picking fights? The it's simp, the simp fight. thing. The yeah, simp thing. Simps. But it's completely like, I'm, I'm a big Nietzsche fan. And yeah. he talks about in the book Beyond Good and Evil, how yeah. Christianity inverted like what, what is built on like power and autonomy and strength and made those into like demonized things and, and bad things. And then they embraced being like meek and, and weak and poor in spirit. Right. Yeah. And, and, and like things like, like the story with the doubting Thomas or like, if you, if you want like this, this character Thomas that wanted like real proof of Jesus existing, he's like, all right, here's your proof, but now I'm punishing you. And the whole moral is you should never want proof. If you do, the Lord will punish you. So like, that's perfect because there is no proof. So all the, all the Christians run around and they're like, oh, you want to, you want us to show proof of, of something that makes zero sense and contradicts all scientific claims. Oh, well, it's better to not have the proof. And all these guys are like, it's better to not have the results. And it, yeah. and it, I have and the it, knowledge, it, man. I'm, I'm red pill, bro. They they just want yeah. a LARP red pill. Now, there are some guys who really do want to get better, but a lot of guys, they just want... Um, that's why the marketers are so successful with scamming them. They just want... Their, they have pain, they have emotion, and they want to change that emotion. So like you said, the sale is made before they even get the content, right? Before they even do anything. They're sold just on these pain buttons. That's what they push. This button, yep. button, button, push, 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 push. And which is a marketing game, is, which, which to be clear, has nothing to do with fixing the problem or helping you or anything. It's a marketing right. game. They're good at harping on your pain and getting you to yeah. want to relieve that pain with your money or, or by being a fan. And they, they tell you, you they want to keep you in pain and temporarily alleviate it, kind of like you know the health industry with pills and shit. You have a problem. We're not going to fix it. We're going to treat the symptom. So you still have the pain. It's going to come back, especially when you stop taking our shit. It's the same yes. thing with pickup and stuff. It's it's fucking huge scam. It sucks, man. Because there's real answers out there too. There, there are guys doing real shit. You know, I've done uh, an incredible job. I think bringing together great speakers over 15 years, and I take a lot of heat for it. People hate me for it in some ways. They make up all these reasons, endless reasons. Well, what was your, well, if you could be, if you could be, I'm curious why you never asked me. Did you, I'm sure you had a bad image of me in the past as well. Not really. Uh, I didn't know about you till 2016. A friend of mine who's a big fan of yours. He probably met you at your spe your speech in Orlando. I moved back to Orlando in 2016, so I think I missed you. Uh, maybe you came earlier in the year. But uh, I got here, well, I got there early in the year, but I didn't start like hanging out with the guys again until later in the you year. Know, you know that guy, Xavier? He was like yeah. one of the, yeah. Yeah, he's a good, he's one of my best friends. Awesome dude. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, he loves, he thinks you're awesome, man. He's the reason was I that, found Was him. that the guy you were talking about? Yeah. Yeah, I was going to keep okay. his name off the show, but whatever. Yeah. I don't think he cares. He's a great dude. He's banged a lot of tricks. 
Uh, no, he likes my joke with him. He likes banging a lot of fat Latina women. These chubbies, <laughs> but, he, but, he, but he bangs hot women too, right? He bangs a, a spectrum. He's dude. That dude. I've been on crutches literally after surgery, and that dude has thrown women at me, and and right. I fucked them. Like it's fucking. That dude is uh, Xavier's a great dude, man. And he's a guy. He's he's a manosphere dude who cares about game. He cares about skill. He cares about these issues, right? He's not. He's not. A, he doesn't. He's not a coach. He's not a marketer, right? He's just a dude. And he's been in this community. I used to go out with him back in the 2000s to go pick up chicks. I met him in 2008, 2009. So I've been going out with him as a wingman for a long ass time. I didn't see him for a while. Uh, I was in, I moved to a different part of the state. But the minute I came back, we started hanging out. And I actually hadn't seen him in years. And uh, his, he has like a really hot sister. So I was like, oh man, you have the hot ass sister, dude. How's she doing? Yeah. So what, what, so what happened? He, he turned you on to my stuff or he told you about me. Yeah. And, then, and, then, and then what happened was it, I, mean, I, I didn't even have my YouTube until 2017. I was waiting until that yeah. fucking arrest shit to blow over i didn't want to i don't loading know. i talked to you on facebook i hit you up we were talking on facebook there's an old chat in my messenger still but i think your account ended up getting banned or something and mm -hmm. then i just kind of forgot about you to be honest like i just deal with so many speakers and there's the manosphere is massive like i don't even know how many coaches and speakers there are there's hundreds if not thousands technically there I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know anyone getting consistent advanced level results for guys besides myself yeah uh, do you uh, do you know anybody doing that that's a big question, man. That's a big question. There are there are other good dating coaches. Not, not even not even like one, not even like once in a while. I mean, <laughs> I'm yeah. not even trying to be extreme. It, it just doesn't happen. Like Alex from Playing with Fire, I think, is like the next, sure, the next closest. And but he's just focused on online and texting. Nobody's teaching like yeah. hardcore. Like here's how you crush cold approach too. Here's how you crush the whole system. Yeah. Like just, just real quick for those like those of you that aren't familiar, I, I make it like a sales funnel. It's like the online game, the night game, the day game, and the top. That filters down to phone numbers. Then I show you exactly what to text. I give you every control path of what to text in order to set up public dates, or I have text scripts to bring them straight to the house. Then I show you how to run your dates, how to close, and the last piece is the retention. So the way that you improve is you see where the where you're running into bottlenecks, right? Like if you're not getting enough phone numbers, you fix the lead acquisition part. If you're not getting enough dates, you fix the texting part and the lead acquisition part. But once your leads or acquisition part is fixed, then it's a problem with your text game. But I give the guys all the text to, to send. That's why they're getting dates once they're getting phone numbers. And then I show them like very systematically how you run your dates. And I'm trying to get them to the level where they can bring home 80 to 90% of their dates. And then yeah. they can close 80 to 90% of the girls they bring home. And then they can retain 80 to 90% of the girls they close. And so once you fix all those bottlenecks, now your funnel has widened open. Then you just put some volume at the top and you keep it as wide as possible. The skill part is how wide you keep the funnel. But most guys in the community, their skills suck. So they get very little phone numbers and their texting sucks. No dates or very little dates. They, run, they get a date now and then they fuck up the date. And there's so many compounding bottlenecks, they have not a chance in the world. And then these coaches usually either leave them stagnated or push them in the, in the opposite direction. Now, not only were they get bad at getting the phone numbers, now they're being a total fucking weirdo and creeping the girls out. And, and now they're getting no phone numbers, right? Or they're getting like extremely flaky phone numbers. Yeah. And, then they're, and then they're being told, well, if you just take massive action, you'll get good. Right, so then they go and they they do the wrong methods a thousand times, and now they're that's way old, worse. Uh, that's some Tony Robbins shit guy in the manosphere, yeah, creeping in. Yeah, I'll Dude. say this: uh, I, I'm not in a position to individually rank dating coach to dating coach to seduction coach. I've, there's just no way I can do that unless someone's a fraud, and I'm going to call them out. You don't have to, you don't have to rank. Them. I'm just curious if you know anybody yeah. that's getting guys good results, like on on a somewhat regular basis, because I don't know of anybody doing that. There are guys, some of our speakers. You'll meet them at 21 Convention, and you'll you'll meet these guys, you know, firsthand. Uh, not everybody's perfect, right? I've had a lot of some, not a lot, but some bad speakers. Roll Tomasi, for example, one scumbag. But uh, there are guys out there who are good, and they, I don't know if they're as good. I mean, that's up for you guys to debate. It's up for the audience to kind of compare and contrast. Um, but I'm, my most, my biggest concern is guys who are malicious and fraudulent. And beyond that, you know, it's a thing. I know, I think Ratiz is as good as you, to be honest. I don't know if he's as good as, good as teaching, but he's probably, he was one of the best guys I've ever seen in real life, if not the best. Where and is he, he living? These days, I think Colorado. Uh, I'm not 100 percent sure. I haven't talked to him in a little while. He used to live in Florida, though. I mean, he was an old roommate. We had Project Orlando. It was me, Ratis, and one of the moderators, admins for Top Layer, the layer in the area. He's thousand plus. I never met a guy in real life that's that's thousand plus from Cold Approach. I'd I'd like to meet him for sure. Yeah, he's awesome, dude. He used to bang girls in broad daylight at a 7-Eleven in his minivan. I mean, he would be like, he would just meet them in a gas station parking lot and fuck them five minutes later. It was nuts. I saw this like go down. It was fucking wild. There's another guy too. He's actually he's on YouTube. Uh, Devious. You ever heard of Devious? Probably not. Mm -hmm. Old school. He's on YouTube. at a, a channel. It's huge. Millions of subscribers called Prank Invasion. You ever heard of Prank Invasion? That was a big channel. Might have so. got, got banned at this point. 
anyway, his videos were fucking, a lot of them were fake on YouTube, like these prank invasion videos. They're just pranks that were kind of staged. But they were obviously compelling and controversial and got to be riled up. But I've seen him in real life too, way back in the day, 2006, 2007. And he went by Devious in the pickup community. He was fucking savage. I mean, he pulled girls in, in the mall into a bathroom for blowjobs, like right in front of me, just like broad daylight. It was fucking savage. So these are the, he was young, man. He was like 18, 19 years old. So there are some guys he's who are more like a, yeah, it's more like natural style than. No, he's just fucking, he was really uh, mechanical, actually. Dude, I, I saw him one time read like fast seduction, like eight hours straight. Like he didn't move. This guy was like a robot, but he was very methodical like you. you were, you're much more free flowing than he is, to be honest. He was like old school social robot kind of thing, but he was like a game robot. And uh, Ratisse is different than that, too. That Ratisse is kind of like, he's like a really free, uh, free flowing version of you. One of my friends calls him like a cat, like a fucking like actual like street cat that kind of licks his own balls and then just fucks like random stray cats. <laughs> uh, it's just a wild, just a wild. You you love him if you met him, man. Great. At the, end, at the end of the day, it's a chess game, so I really respect it. I want I want to get connected with those with those best yeah. guys. Yeah. And like, there's still I feel like there's still a lot more to evolve in the game. Like, there's still yeah. I look at I look at it as one big system in my head. And it, like when I was doing that nuclear missile defense stuff, I was a systems engineer, and my my job was to optimize the speed of response time and the accuracy of response if there's ever a nuclear, biological, or chemical missile attack against against the U.S. or our allies. And I drove in. Uh, a really key optimization that basically allowed allowed the surface area of the Navy to double, right? Because it, you know, it it, bas it was this massive optimization. They gave me like a thousand bucks and taxed it. I was like 25, 26, whatever. You know, complete lack of, and didn't didn't correlate to the the you know the, the significance of what I did. But you know that what what's the you know I guess that could save save lives and stuff like that. So that's nice, but. You know th this game is, is so is so interesting because there's there's so many nuances to it. it i don't think anybody can ever run like a perfect set there since there's so many variables so it, it's like it's kind of like a lifelong quest to like get closer and closer approximations of a perfect of perfect interactions yeah and it, it's all about making the highest probability moves just like poker and, and chess so and any yeah, that's, yeah. that's why i can't stand these guys that are like it's all looks it's total bs yeah when you, not... when you text something to a girl is there a better text to send than not of course yep. is there a better thing to say than not of course are there always better things to do at every step of the way than others yes of course so you know with, regarding the looks it's like yes they factor in but maximize your sexual market value and then shut the fuck up about it you know don't don't make a million forum posts about and, and rag on other guys for not being a chad uh, yeah. so all that is extremely toxic as well Yep. Let's, uh, we've gone over two hours, so we'll need to wrap up soon. I mean, we could go on indefinitely, but I want to kind of wind this down a few more game questions. So okay. something from the, some of the audience, they can, because we've been going into a lot of awesome stuff, just, you know, hitting on these guys that are frauds, this and that, and the community, but also some advice early in the show, things you've been through. But I do want to ask for the guys who are still very early in their, in their lay count, and they do want to get better with women, and they do want to hire, have a higher notch count. Let's say the guy has 10 lays in his life, right? Five or 10, and he wants to get to 100. What would you say to that guy for his journey in his life, other than like join my coaching, right? What what is he going to go through, and what should he expect, and how can he get better to get to a hundred? So yeah, I mean, yeah, like, like obviously, you know, this isn't a plug either, but I, I've spent so much time perfecting the system, like that's going to be the quickest route. But what they should be prepared for is that it's that it first of all it can change like almost literally overnight. Like this this is a skill game, but when you plug into an optimized system, you don't need a thousand approaches or a thousand nights out. You don't need months or years of practice. I, I have countless examples where the guy spent many years on, on pickup, was was part of many products, many forums, et cetera. And it's the same story every time. They still suck. And I change it and start getting them laid very, very quickly, like at a very fast rate once they're plugging into an optimized system. So, so lesson number one is when you plug into an optimized system, the results can come very, very fast. Lesson number two is you can't just have access to the full package stunners out of the gate. Right, nobody can, and anybody claiming that is lying. So they need to be like, realistic, right? Yeah, you, there's like this leveling up process. You're like evolving, like what you bring to the table, etc. You can't. I get a lot of guys come on the program. Hey, I I just want nine pluses. Okay, have you ever banged an eight before? Or have you ever banged a nine before? No. Have you ever banged an eight before? No. So they Seven. should be prepared to bang some fat girls on the way to 100. Yes. Yes. Pretty much. I mean, like you bang can't fat girls, you, John Anthony. You can't be. <laughs> you can't be icy cool around like an eight or nine when you're not you're not ready for that yet like first of all like when a guy is like exposed to a quality higher than what he's used to he starts trying to like play it different and, and he starts getting very in his head and overanalyzing 
and he and he doesn't want to fuck it up and he's terrified of fucking it up and going back down in quality and he thinks he needs to play it special and like what would the cool guy do in these situations and, and the girl and he doesn't sees feel like, he doesn't feel entitled like he would to a fat girl right the fat yeah. girl you're just like yeah, i could fuck this girl who cares but it's that attitude that gets i'm you not made, saying right? they, they don't necessarily need to start there but they need to they need they can't yeah. they don't have access to the eight five and nine plus range yet yeah. in the beginning but it happens very quickly i have like i have virgins come on my program that 20 year old virgin took the six programs didn't get any lays at all lost virginia on day four by like week five he was out with his first eight bombed the shit out of it and i'm like man and he was all rattled i'm like dude they like made out at least i'm like dude you're gonna fuck that up that's part of the acclimation period five weeks ago you you hadn't even felt what a vagina feels like now you're going out with eights so the, the process can happen quickly but like you're gonna like I tell guys you're gonna be scared you're gonna fuck it when I was around my first nine my first ten I was terrified I I was like you're thinking how do I gain points how do I not lose points is this the right thing to say is she gonna be offended by this joke uh, I want to say this thing but I'm not sure how it's gonna go over how am I doing walking, so far you're walking on eggshells basically yes whereas I tell guys the best mindset is before any cold approach assume you got the girl the purpose of the interaction is not to win the girl over when you assume you got the girl and you believe it and you can as you get results you have empirical demonstrable proof that you can do that and it wasn't a big deal but in, but you need to fully believe that because if you don't you're going to be doubting yourself and I, I use the analogy of like if you went in to buy a car and the car salesman was like here's this car it's the parts are all busted out the windows are broken uh do you want to buy it Right. If you don't believe in your own product, if you don't believe in your own worth, your own worth that you bring to the table, then no girl is going to buy into that either. Right. So if you come in with the mindset on a date or on a uh, cold approach that you already got the girl, that is the that is like at the top of the tree for all your verbals and all your body language to flow from. So once you can get in line with that mindset, that's going to put a lot of the stuff into place. And then guys need to be realistic in their expectations. I tell them at a high level, I'm only closing 10 percent of my phone numbers. That means a lot of the time it's not going to work out. Nobody can ever avoid rejection. It, that's part of the game, right? So if you look at like door to door sales, the best salesman in the world can never avoid being told to fuck off and getting a door slammed in his face. And and I've played games with other advanced friends where when I get a rejection or he gets a rejection, the other one of us will go in nine times out of 10, the same reaction. So like there are, exist girls that really have boyfriends and husbands that, are, that don't want to talk to you. There exist girls that are in a bad mood or you're not their type or they're just, you know, whatever. They're, they're just bitchy in general. Who, who knows what the factor is? But I tell guys to look at that. Don't take that to heart. Like, be critical of the of your game skills and where you made game mistakes. But don't take bad reactions. Don't let it deflate your confidence. Because what what starts to happen is guys negative spiral from from interaction to interaction and from day to day and week to week. And then they go in like, you know, it becomes self fulfilling. Oh, I'm the kind of guy that doesn't get girls. The last bunch of times I tried it didn't work out. It's not gonna work out this time. Uh, hey, hey, you know, and they're already done before they've even tried. Right. So let me talk a really quick story. I, I had a, a Indian client in, in Vegas that was like very caught up on the fact that he, he was Indian and that he was a virgin. And he, I was only at like 250 late count at that time only. But he was like, hey, man, like you've been a couple hundred girls. That's why they respond positively to you. And I bang zero. That's why they respond negatively to me. I said, we don't have our late count on a post-it note on our fucking forehead. If you come in like the man and, and, you, and you, you're very confident in believing in your own, what you bring to the table, they're going to respond positively to that. If I come in weak and passive and, and unsure of myself, they're going to respond negatively to that. And that kind of flipped the switch. And I go through that with a lot of clients. And, and then he actually got his first make out and pull. And we were making jokes. Me and my little business partner were making jokes. He was like the coolest virgin in the club. But when you get that mindset on track, right, and then you're equipped with the proper strategies, it's very rare that I don't get a guy very good very fast. It, it, it's almost impossible not to. Not, you know, there's extreme hard cases and this and that. There's exceptions. But for the vast majority of the guys, massive success is literally like two to three weeks away. When you're when you're plugged into the right mindset and the right strategy, you're just going to get the results, and then you're going to be able to do that for the rest of your life. It, this is not rocket science. I can, like I said, I can explain like most of night game strategy in an hour to an hour and a half. I can just give guys my text scripts, which are the result of texting over ten thousand numbers. But they just copy paste them. It handles every control path, every objection, what to do if she doesn't reply or flakes or cancels or reschedules. So when all the texting is done for you, you have a full game plan on how to run your date and how to close and the, the full game plan on how to retain and how to do your cold approach and your online stuff. And you get the pro pictures. Now you're you're equipped to fucking destroy. You don't need to watch all this crap on the on the fucking on fucking YouTube. You know, there's like how you just put this. They're equipped to destroy. Exactly. Pussies need to get slammed and destroyed. So you know, <laughs> this, this is fucking great. Yeah.
Yeah, guys who get late talk like this, and guys who don't don't talk like this. They talk just uh, much more hot air kind of, you know, flam flamboyant bullshit. It's like all the marketing stuff, right now, right? Yeah, yeah, and it drives me fucking crazy because because yeah. they have way bigger presences than me, yeah. and like well, I have, I have the saying, like, I have, what's yeah. up? They they focus most of their energy and time on scamming men. That's why they have the bigger audiences. Frankly, if they actually focused on banging chicks and developing systems and skills. That's they would have a smaller audience. It's just it is what it is. Um, I'm not a dating is, coach I'm somewhere in between, but yeah. the thing is too, and and I, I had a guy give me kind of a rude awakening recently. He, he he's like a, a internet marketer. He said you're selling the steak. He said people don't want the steak; they want the sizzle. Yeah, yep. and he's like, you need to like, I, I'm on there like, look, I'm banging tons of girls. I'm doing that for everybody else, and people are like, oh, that's not that exciting. I want to get all the emotions that come along with it. Like yeah, I want they to want watch a, a cartoon video that makes them feel good about, you know, and then promising them the world with all this bullshit from somebody who had the product made in India by like random dudes <laughs> who speak broken English. Yeah. If, if guys only knew, man, it's, it's so sick, but I'm glad there's like guys out there like you doing, you know, real shit and uh, going to task too. When you, when you believe it's in the, it's the right thing to do. That's good stuff, man. It's yeah, it is. It is a little fucking frustrating though that, you know, like I can't post right now on YouTube for a week. And yeah. the, the channel's under fire. Max is like, you know, with minions or, or whatever coming through reporting videos from, from years back. And I do have, you know, like I have a, a legitimate business where I'm getting guys good on a regular basis. And now, like, unfortunately, like, I can't even put out like good value content right now. And, and yeah. you know, all those, a lot of those videos, there's like 25 videos we privated yeah. and we're going to have to go through and scroll, you know, so they're fucking like impacting my business with yeah. their nonsense when I'm trying to show people, look, he paid girls for to be in this harem. He's not banging them. They're just posing and, and building this fake image so that you guys will buy his business mentoring, which doesn't work, by the way, at all. Yep. And and if anyone talks against it, he's going to try to censor you. And, you know, he's got multi, all these offshore companies. That's, it goes so deep. Like I was saying, these guys got offshore uh, bank accounts. So there's so much shady shit happening. I, I've I've yep. heard of them uh, threatening to destroy people's lives and, and, and all this stuff or actually trying to. Yep. It, the the real the the, the real uh, stuff behind like real social dynamics is is incredibly dark, what darker than anyone could ever imagine. And, and they with threatened most to sue, they threatened to sue me a long time ago, back in like two thousand nine, two thousand ten. They threatened to sue me. Yeah, they sent me a nasty fucking letter. For what? I don't I don't even remember something about a video. Oh, it was a video of Manhor. We had a speaker, the guy you talked about, and we put yeah. their website on it. We're like visit Manhor at you know whatever rsdwebsite dot com or something. And they sent this huge fucking you know BS letter, but Manhor got him to chill out. I didn't have to lawyer up or anything. I dare them to fuck me now. I'll go to war with people, man. I'm gonna fuck. Um, I have enough money, skills, relationships, time, attention, lawyers. Like I'll do whatever I got to do. I'm not gonna be silenced by these fucking scumbags. And people need they need to get called out. People want this united manosphere and all this stuff. It's like, what do you think that takes? Singing kumbaya around a fire or calling frauds out? No, you have to call fraud where you see fraud. You know, it doesn't mean I'm some fucking not, I don't want to spend 24 hours a day bitching at people on the internet for being scam artists. You're never going to, it's never going to end, right? There's always going to be scam artists. But if there's a systemic prop, you know, really problematic level of it, it's got to be resolved. It's got to be healed. Well, that especially when it's, when it's the majority, like, like what, you know, I don't, I don't want to make you put out a number here, but I, I'm going to ask what would be your best approximation in the manosphere in at large in general of people that are, that are scamming the audience? What, what percentage would you put out there? Including like internet marketers like Tao Badass and these people. Yeah. Yeah. If you include the internet marketers, so I, I don't even know if I don't even consider them part of the manager sometimes because all they do, they're just like clicking shit on fucking. But their product, advertising. their products are impacting all the, the viewers at a big That's scale. That's true. And they're and they're searching, they're trying to SEO shit and just, you know, advertise and yeah. So I, I you have a point. I know. If you include them, probably seventy to eighty percent. It's Pareto principle. There's they actually it's a minority of men in the manosphere and content creators who are legit, who mean well, who are doing well by the community. They're making money in what they do. Hopefully, that's part of what they do. Some people don't. They really don't. They don't do shit with it, right? They're just kind of doing the thing. But you know, there's there's a chunk of guys who are doing well, and most people are not though. It's 70, 80 percent, I would say. Yeah, who are just really like really serious frauds. You mentioned these these big internet marketers. I don't even go into them sometimes. That's that's to me like a lost cause because they're so massive and they have so much. They're so motivated to be scam artists. It's like, well, what they're are you even going to do? Their direct response also. Like you, yeah. you get hit, you get hit with a, a sales presentation, you make the buy decision. They're not going and researching this whole thing before they before they purchase. Yeah, yeah. And they're right. not even they're not they're not even aware of competitors, for example, or people who are criticizing this stuff. So to me, what matters there's like you have internet marketers floating ground doing the scammy bullshit. 
You then have what I call the Manosphere Light, which are guys who are not super involved, but sort of Jordan Peterson types, Stefan Molyneux, guys like this, Sargon of Akkad. They try to help men and focus, talk about these issues for men, right? Fatherhood, uh, you know, feminism, all this crap, Me Too crap, false allegations. Then you have like the core Manosphere, which is, I think, where you and I operate. And that to me is where it matters, because if you can heal that and focus on that and fix that, that will spread, I think, and disseminate out as best as it can. You know, I don't know what we can do to stop without, otherwise, without class action lawsuits against these guys. That's a big deal. That That's actually how you stop these massive frauds from going on. But how much time and attention can you devote to that? And who's going to get it done? God bless you if you can get that done, dude. I'm, I support you 100% on it. I just don't know if I'm going to spend, you know, huge amounts of money in my life and time. I went to war with Rolla Tomasi because I thought it was the right thing to do. I took a lot of fucking bullets for it and a lot of heat, death threats, all kinds of shit, right? It cost me a lot of money. But I put my balls and my money where my mouth is when I thought it really counted. And I still do that from time to time. You know, Donovan Shart has been attacking me, you know, for over a month now. I let it slide. I let it slide. I'm like, fuck this loser. I don't want to deal with you this. See, you see his girl? Oh, uh, she's <laughs> disgusting. Yeah, it's it's brutal. You you did a you did a criticism of that, and you yeah. hit the nail on the head. A three. And um, you know, if a guy's dating, if a guy's dating a five and calls her a six, you know, I don't care. I'm not here to nitpick with people about you know upping a girl because they have beer goggles or girlfriend goggles or whatever. <laughs> but when you're trip when you're tripling numbers, it's a problem. So your, your analysis of that was spot on, 100%, like really spot on. And uh, I wish guys would watch more of your videos, man. I hope they did. But he's, but he's like ultra popular, right? Nah, who cares? He's, his channel's dying. That's why he's drama marketing now. That's why he's attacking everyone. His channel's, it, he had some sort of, I guess he's getting like shadow bans on his channel, which happens to uh, like every YouTube channel that's not mainstream. So he's kind of frustrated with that. I think that's why he's drama marketing. I hadn't talked to him in months and this dude came out of nowhere attacking me. I kind of knew, I kind of figured out last year he's kind of a piece of shit. I'm like, man, fuck this. I'm going to stay away. This dude, he dropped out of 21 convention and he blamed Stefan Molyneux and Candace Owens, which is so weird because Candace Owens is this, this black you know, anti feminist conservative woman who I don't have anything to do with. I've like retweeted her or something, right? So he drops out of 21 convention and 22 convention, blames this, you know, feminist uh, black chick that, or anti feminist black chick that he hates mm -hmm. on me because I retweeted her or something, or Stefan Molyneux retweeted her one of our speakers. And then he blames Stefan Molyneux for going after George Floyd, all this crap. I'm like, this is a bunch of fake news garbage. Like, what the fuck? Anyway, he started attacking me like a month ago out of nowhere. And that really was you know, surprising because it didn't make any sense. Like, I hadn't talked to this guy. There's been no communication at all. There was no public problem with him. Even in private, I was, I was getting suspicious, but I was like, I don't have any fucking beef with this dude. He comes out of nowhere coming at me, attacking me, right? And then he's like, oh, I'm not attacking Anthony, but he, he goes on these hour-long tirades about how untrustworthy and what a scumbag I am. I'm not attacking Anthony, but let me spend 45 minutes bitching about how much I hate him, right? It's all this backhanded, like you're saying, this Nietzsche, this Nietzsche shit. It's clown world. It's upside down, right? Oh, I want to unite the Manosphere, but let me go attack everybody, you know, for no fucking reason. This dude came at me for all this fucking fake bullshit. And finally, you know, the day I was like, fuck this shit. I'm done. This guy went too far. He's lying about the can of and stuff. He's lying about all this fucking garbage. He's secretly married to that chick, by the way. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> Yeah, he had a secret wedding with her. He had a wedding. I don't know if he's legally married, like with a with a license, because he he tried to copy what I did, which is called private marriage. So I don't know if he went through with the marriage license or not. But he had a secret wedding and a secret honeymoon uh, in 2019 in summer. That's why he didn't speak at our Poland convention. He was on like a honeymoon and shit. And then he even had a, a first, his first anniversary in Florida last year in in, uh, in Florida. He told me this shit. Like it's fucking crazy. <laughs> so this guy, I mean, it's it's so fucked, dude. And uh, people don't know that he he bashes marriage all day long on his channel, right? I mean, hey, if you have criticisms of marriage, you know I do Same too. With legally. Rolo. Same with Rolo, right? Yeah, Rolo's a massive fraud in like ten different ways, but Rolo's also a doxer, which is way more serious. I mean, it's one thing to scam dudes out of a, like a fifty-seven dollar ebook, but if you're actually doxing dudes and trying to ruin their life uh, just to make yourself famous, that's like super fucked, ultra fucked. That, yeah, I, I can't I can't get around with people that are that are uh, not practicing what they preach. So Donovan Donovan's yeah. all in marriage and got a secret wedding. Yeah, exactly. His his girl, his wife, girlfriend, Good. whatever the fuck owns him. She completely runs his ass. It's pathetic. It's really pathetic. Like it is so it is so opposite how he presents himself in public. Like I am who I am. I'm not perfect. Right. I've made mistakes in my life. I do what I do. I piss people off. I go to war for what I believe in, you know, and that's going to cause ruffle feathers and shit. Right. Like you. But I am who I am. Like, talk to Xavier, talk to Socrates, talk to the guys who fucking know me for 15 years. I am who I am. I am who I am on the internet. In real life, it is what it is. And that's confusing to people because I'm like, I make these memes and piss off all these people, right? And uh, all this shit. But I am who I am. These dudes are not. They're the opposite of who they are. They, they present all these, these fucking fake tough guys, right? 
Oh, m fuck marriage, fuck marriage, fuck marriage. What does he do? He secretly gets married behind the scenes, has a wedding, has a honeymoon, then he hides it. He lies to his audience about it to get more money out of them and scam them out of more fucking courses from other, this circle, this circle jerk of dick sucking that they do with affiliate marketing. It's insane. Yeah. It's disgusting. That's like the dating syndicate. Pro you know, that's, that's what that's it, all about. That's what they have a miniature version of that. Basically, they just suck each other's dicks, right? Rolo Tomasi goes around calling everybody a purple pill course scripter, course scripter, course scripter, selling courses. What does he do? He goes and sells them with these courses. I mean, the, the fucking hypocrisy is insane and because they're all, it's a circle jerk of fraud. And, and all these other courses are my, are my material. Yeah, it's dude, it's fraudception. Like it's straight up like matrix level fraud. It's like layer after layer after layer of fraud and deception and scams and just this horrible shit. And I know what I do is amazing. 21 convention is the most amazing convention in the world for men. I bust my fucking ass 15 fucking years in a row to do it. It is really, 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 really fucking good. 99% of guys who've ever gone to it fucking love it. It is the most amazing event you'll ever go to. It's super professional too. It's on par or better than almost any event you'll ever go to in your life of its type in terms of like a convention and stuff. It's really fucking good. We have security, law enforcement, professional film teams, all kinds of fucking shit for an event like this. And then we hide the venue from feminists and shit. They tried to fuck it up last year, like get us canceled and shit for the women's event. Call it, they wanted to call it bomb threats. They're talking about all kinds of fucked up shit. But I'm good at what I do. I'm really good at what I do. That's how I earn people's respect. I build physical shit in real life. None of these digital fucking gay conferences online. I hate that shit. I do real shit that's really hard. These are four or five day long conferences, right? I work 20 hours a day on this shit. Bust my fucking ass to do real shit. And, you know, I charge a premium price and people pay it or they don't. I charge, you know, $1,000 minimum for a ticket to the event. But if you don't want to go, you can just watch the speeches on the internet. I don't care. Don't want to come, don't come. If you want to support an awesome movement, though, and an awesome convention that's like TED Talks for men that are otherwise banned from TED type events, you would never get invited. You would never get invited to a TED Talk, John. Not in a million fucking years, a TED event. But 21 convention, come speak your piece, man. I'm all about it. And it's a, it's a big open dialogue too, right? Dude, there are guys there able to speak at a, at a different event for fathers we have, the Patriarch event, that are pastors and reverends and all kinds of stuff. And we get along, right? We have shared values in some ways and shared visions for the world. And we're all pro-men and pro-masculinity is what I get. That's the sense I get from you. You want to help men. You want to see them do better. And fundamentally, that's where your head needs to be, not to scam them, rip them off, all this bullshit. These fly by night fucking coaches and, and marketers that pop in and out, you know, three years at a time. You've been around a long time in the community, and I appreciate that and I respect that. The, the time it's the ultimate test, right? Time. Will you pass the test of time? I have. I've been doing this for 15 fucking years. My events are better than anyone's in the world's. No one else even compares to 21 Convention by far. They can all fucking lick my balls. All of them are dead anyway. All these where's RSD World Summit? Gone. All these other conventions, gone, gone, dead, dead, dead. What keeps going? What keeps persisting? 21 Convention. Over and over and over and over again, all over the fucking world, when there's not the scamdemic crap going on. So I don't know. And yeah, what, yeah, and what, yeah, what you said, I respect that a lot about about how you just like, you know, speak your mind and it, and people yeah. like you. That I'm the same way. It's, it's like that scene in Scarface where he, where he's like, uh, yeah. I always tell the truth even when he when I lie. He's like he's like uh, basically everybody else is the same, but they just all fucking hide. Yeah. No, yeah, it's the hiding, it's the hiding and deception and misrepresentation that's really disgusting. Like it is not, it's not just it's fun to insult it and make fun of it, but it's really disgusting. When someone gets married and then you know, so when someone like Donovan Shart bashes fucking marriage and single moms and all this shit, right? And then he secretly gets fucking married behind the scenes as a secret wedding and a secret fucking honeymoon, and then so he really, continues a really fucking ugly chick. Yeah, it's she's it's that bad. Like, I'm not going to get into it because I've met her in real life a couple of times, but your analysis is spot on. I don't dispute it in the slightest. And and I, I say that in particular because the dude's tripling numbers like three to he calls her a nine and it's not a nine. It's a three. <laughs> like, that's really bad, man. I don't look if guys if I don't, you know, everybody's preferences, right? You know, if, if some guy is dating a five and he thinks he's a six, I'm not going to go to war with him over like it is what it is, man. But don't don't fucking piss in my leg and tell me it's raining. Don't fucking fuck twos fat ugly twos and tell me they're sixes right you're fucking heffalumps like these fucking war elephants then tell me they're hot like no you're crazy <laughs> you're de they're delusional man is what it is they're fucking delusional so does uh, he really think she's a nine yeah look on his channel he calls her a nine he calls her a nine it's, ins <laughs> it's insane it is a uh, dude behind the scenes people people see this shit and they're like did you see him say this i'm like yeah it's does he up. show pictures uh sort of on his instagram and stuff a little bit but dude in real life it's it's you're you're spot on like, I'm just going to say it straight up, like your analysis. You hit the nail on the head. That's the exact number I had. Like, you nailed it 100%. And it's it's worse in real life. 
And when and when and, it's below when it's below and guys look at that as shallow or whatever, but when it's below average no. and you're and you're a guru, why why are normal people out there banging girls hotter than you that with, with no understanding of anything? Dude, of stuff? when I first when I first met her, I was the first thing I thought I was I was like I thought Donovan could do way better than this. Like, why is he with this chick? But then I'm in the middle of a conference with two hundred and something men and I don't have fucking time for this shit. You know, I'm working I'm on an hour of sleep, you know, for the fifth day in a row. I got shit to good I got shit to do. Now it's a mental note in the back of my head, obviously. Like that was really weird. Like why is why is he dating this chick? But when you when you're dealing, dude, I have I have relationships with like over 150 speakers that I have to kind of maintain and manage. I don't always have time to go like you know investigate this shit. But no, your analysis is spot on. And this dude deciding to attack me in public unprovoked, and then kind of then he played the victim card. Oh, yeah, this dude starts fights with people, right? Then he gets punched in the face, and he's like, oh, why'd you hit me, bro? It's like because you're a piece of shit and you decided to attack me. Like you fucked up, dude. What do you think was gonna happen? You're gonna fuck with me. I'm gonna knock your teeth out. Like that's how this goes. So, so he's he's not coming to the convention anymore. Well, you said he dropped uh, out, right? Yeah, he dropped out. Then he tried to get back in. He begged me on text message to get back in. He dropped out in the summer. All right. He blamed Candace Owens and Stefan Molyneux. He dropped out of two conventions, the one for the women and the one for the men. Then we drop a speaker list. He sees all these amazing speakers, right, that he didn't know about. And then all of a sudden he says the ex he regurgitates the exact same shit I told him on the phone. Like dropping out is stupid. Why would you drop out for this stupid bullshit? Candace Owens is not even a speaker. That doesn't make sense, right? He comes back and said, you know, Stefan Molyneux. He already he took selfies with Stefan Molyneux like a few months before this, right? He's taking selfies with Stefan Molyneux, this big YouTuber. He's all about, you know, showing off. He's hanging out with Stefan Molyneux. A few months later, he's bitching about Stefan Molyneux saying, you got to boot him out of 21 convention or I'm going to drop out. And I don't fucking roll like that. People don't boss me around. You don't tell me what to do at my own convention. If you have hard evidence of someone doing something really bad, you need to show me and I'll take a look at it. Because that could be bad for me. That could be bad for my friends. That could be bad for my company. That could be bad for the speakers. So if Stefan Molyneux is dropping end bombs criticizing, you know, George Floyd, that's a problem. I need a video, I need a time code, I need a timestamp. But if you're just disagreeing with somebody, another alumni speaker, I don't care. That's not unless there's something hardcore going on that I need to know about, I don't want to fucking hear it. Don't fucking take selfies of people and be all happy, you know, taking, you know, smiling with them. Then you get mad at them a month later and come to me like I'm your fucking daddy. Like get the fuck out of here. I don't have time for that shit. I'm a fucking I'm an entrepreneur. I'm serious about what I do and I care about it. But anyway, he dropped out of 21 convention a week later or whatever, a week and a half in June, July, 2020. I put out the speaker list for the event. People go ape shit. All of a sudden, who, who pops back on my phone? Donovan Shard. <laughs> oh, hey, man, I want to get back in, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's like, you dropped out a fucking week ago. You want to drop out of an event and then drop back in? What is this, fucking musical chairs? Get the fuck out of here. I don't have time for that shit. <laughs> like, it's fucking stupid, man. This is the kind of shit you have to deal with, dude, behind the scenes. Like, And then See, this I, comes out I, and attacks I, me, he fuck himself. I see some of my personality in you. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's the name, dude. It's, it's the always say, name, right? I always say get the fuck out of here. I'm looking yeah. at some of these comments. People are saying this is more cognitive, cognitive dissonance shit. Donovan says she brings quality because she can create websites. He's way more transparent than you, dude. No, she basically runs his fucking... She runs his ass, dude. It's disgusting. Like, it's a super beta relationship. It's pathetic. <laughs> like, it's, it's really that bad. Same with Rolo, dude. Like, it's all these fucks. So a three rating, married in secret, and she's yep. and she's wearing the pants too. It's about as bad as it gets, and he, and he's preaching the direct opposite. It's, never, it's, it's never get married. Worse. Don't let women rule you. Marry even, hot chicks. Uh, this is just this, the, even the marriage stuff is tip of the iceberg. It's it, it's actually worse. Like the like the rest of the rabbit hole you mentioned, this dark rabbit hole. It just gets worse and worse. The real shit about Donovan and all these guys. It's just it's an endless it's an endless fucking bottomless pit of dumb fuckery and just fraud and <laughs> retarded shit. It's like it's so fucked, dude. It is so fucking toxic and we have to do the best we can with it to deal with it. You know, like there's so much of it. It's overwhelming. It's a tidal wave of, of bullshit and fraud, a tsunami of fraud. Yeah, yeah there's there's like a, a long list of guys that I haven't even addressed yet that, I, that are like in my sights, you know, but yeah, I, I might just put it on a different channel just to not fucking exactly risk, risk the main yeah, channel. Put it on a new channel and then just link it from a community tab and drive traffic to it to keep your channel safe. Or you can even use BitChute for it. Use BitChute, use library. Because that's off platforms. That's hard for them to even go after. Those those sites won't take your shit down. Unless it's illegal, they're not going to take it down. It's free speech, you know? Gab TV, BitChute, Library, you can do that. But, you know, when they come out, let me know, man. If you're making videos that have evidence and you have, you know, legitimate criticisms of people, you should put them out. And I'll promote them as best I can, you know, my Twitter and my accounts and stuff. And go to war, that's man. Awesome. People need to do it. People need balls. This is a savagery that the manosphere needs and it lacks because it's filled with these fucking beta sheep and mano sheep and shit. And but, we need yeah. men. We need men, man, to be men. You said it. You said it exactly right. Is there's there's this like uh, 
masquerading alphas that are actually very beta themselves. Yep. Pushing lots of beta behavior disguises alpha behavior and the whole thing yeah. flipped upside down. Yeah. It's fucked. We'll talk more about it, but this has been an awesome show, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate, time. appreciate yeah. it. Thanks for having me on. Let me let me uh, just direct it for whoever's still still on. Check out uh, uh, John Anthony Lifestyle YouTube. The eight week mentorship program I run is platinumdatingsystem.com. Yep. At the bottom there, you can get on a free 30 minute call with me. I'll explain that. But I can't post for another like five days, but I'm back daily content after that shit clears. Cool. And um, we'll look forward to the, the the second channel with all the all the blasting. And, and yeah, I'd appreciate you got a much bigger reach than me. I got a lot, of, yeah. a lot of stuff to say about these motherfuckers. Yeah, man. Go to war, dude. I'm all about it. You want to go to war? I'll take you to war. Good. Uh, I'm all about it. I'll support you. And also links you mentioned that you just, you know, these, these links are in the video description actually right now. So if you're on Facebook or YouTube watching this, the links are there. Check out his channel. Uh, you know, John Anthony, uh, pick up or what are they search on YouTube? For? John Anthony. John Anthony pull up. Yeah. And then visit platinum dating systems.com. Boom. John, appreciate your time. Appreciate it, brother. Everyone else, looking, thanks for watching. Looking forward to, to meeting. When, when is the uh, the conference? That you October. Want to meet October 2021. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm working the exact dates I have, but I'm still kind of nailing them down, the details and stuff. And it's going to be three conventions at once, 21 Summit. We'll have 21 convention for men, 21 convention for fathers, a patriarch edition, and the 22 convention for women to make women great again. So it's a great time. It's a lot of fun. And this will be in Florida? Oh, yeah. Orlando. It's where we founded. Yep. Sweet. Okay. Yeah, you can meet Xavier, man. Yeah. Meet the guys. Awesome. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for bringing me on. This was cool. Yes, sir. Everyone we we else? lined up actually pretty close. I didn't. I had no idea. Yeah, man. This has been really fun. Um, we'll end up here, though. Everyone else, thanks for watching the Red Man Group episode 136, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure it's 136. I'll see you next week, 11.30 a.m. on the Red Man Group on 21 Studios. Peace out. Hit the like button. Leave a comment. Comments are really important. Thank you. All right, guys. Thanks.